Good morning and welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Welcome back to work, South Africa. For oh, all of you man. who are enjoying your long weekend, <laughs> oh, we're back to reality. But don't worry, we're here for you and we're here to lead you into an amazing, amazing week. Hello, team. That's How are you guys doing? Oh, good. Good. Well, listen, you. It might be a fake Monday for a lot of people, but the school holidays are well underway. And if you're wondering how you can keep the kids entertained, well, we've got some great ways for you to make the holidays fun. So don't go anywhere. Lovely. Um, maybe they're getting a little extra gaming time. We've got a brand new game that they can take a look at. It also gives us a history lesson through the ages. World of Warriors. Gareth Woods joins mm. us for that. Mm. And then you guys, we had the sound check from Bevan Samuels, our guest Ooh, artist wow. this morning. You do not want to miss out on any of his performances. They've dubbed him the Chris Brown of South uh -huh. Africa, but I personally think he's better. Flames. Okay. Nah, he's he fantastic flames, and a lovely young guy as well. Then of course, being a Tuesday, we get into our medical matters and we're going to take a look at that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Not the heartbeat. The pulse, your pulse, what does it all mean? How does it affect your health? How can you tell how healthy you are yeah. by your pulse? We'll get into all of that with our resident doctor this Exactly, morning. and talking about issues of the heart, I think the entire oh. nation was in mourning yesterday and even Shock, today yeah. when we heard the very sad news of the passing of one of our greatest struggle uh, veterans and of course the mother of the nation, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, who passed away at the age of 81 after battling a very long illness for which she was in and out of hospital since the beginning of the year. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to family, to friends, uh, lots and lots of messages coming through of mm. condolences. We'll look at that a bit later on in the show, but uh, we have truly lost one of the icons of the struggle and our hearts are truly sad today. So uh, we just want to send out our thoughts, prayers and condolences to all of the family right now at this time. Well, let's get you set for the day ahead and get into those temperatures for this Tuesday morning and our news headlines. Thank you very much, team, and thank you for choosing to start your morning with us. Uh, I hope you are doing absolutely well back at work as well. It's a four-day work week, at least a nice and short one. Let's kick it off with your temperatures and your weather very quickly. Now, the northeastern region can experience a couple of thunder showers today with mild temperatures expected. I'll run you through quickly. Polokwane, 14 minimum with a maximum 26. Mumbela, 16 and nice and hot 30 maximum later on today. Pretoria, 15 and a mild 24 and thunder showers expected. A couple of thunder showers expected for Johannesburg as well. 14 minimum and your maximum 23 degrees. Mike Eng 16, 26 also with some thunder showers and thunder showers for Clagstorp on 15 with a maximum mile 24. Kimberley 16, 24. Bloemfontein on 13 minimum with a maximum 24 degrees. Richards Bay 22 and a high of 32. Nice and warm today. Peter Marisburg 18, 27. Durban 23 and a high of 28 degrees. Mtata on 18, a minimum reaching high of 25 degrees. East London 19, 25. Craddock 16 with a maximum 28 degrees and thunder showers expected. Port Elizabeth 18, 23. George 17, 22. Sutherland starting off on 13, reaching a high of 26 degrees and thunder showers expected. Sunny day in Cape Town, 15 minimum and your maximum 26 degrees. Worcester 14, 30. Springbok on 16 minimum, reaching a high of 28 today. And Uppington can also expect some thunder showers for your Tuesday, starting off on 17 minimum with a maximum of 27 degrees. That's a wrap of your weather for the 6.30 Bulletin. As always, we'll keep you updated throughout the course of your morning. I'm back just after 7 with another update. Thank you, Ewan. Well, before we get into your traffic, the Department of Energy has announced an increase in the petrol price. 95 unleaded inland will increase by 72 cents a litre and along the coast by 62 cents a litre as of midnight tonight and the per litre price for 93 unleaded. Petrol will increase by 69 cents a litre inland and 59 cents along the coast and diesel prices will go up by 65 cents in Gauteng and 55 cents at the coast. But quickly looking at your road starting off in Gauteng in Parktown there's a multi-vehicle accident on the N17 westbound. It's before Osborne Road is blocking two lanes so you can expect major delays. Please pass with caution. And that's where I leave your traffic. I'll have another update for you in half an hour. Pharma Dynamics, 
effective, affordable health care. Well, it's time for us to head to social media this morning. And of course, the very first post of the morning is that of the passing of Winnie Madigizela Mandela. And we basically asked you, uh, we said we mourn the loss of anti-apartheid struggle icon Winnie Mandela, who passed away in Johannesburg yesterday at the age of 81. Rest in peace, Mama. Jasmine starting off our responses by saying my, condolence, my condolences to Ma Winnie and family and friends. You lived a shining example to South Africa and even across the world. Innocent says, morning fam indeed. She was a huge rock that people stood by. Uh, Layla says, all I can say is death be not proud. Rest in peace, mama. And then Teresa says, may she rest in peace. Queen also say, may her soul rest in peace as well. Thank you so much for those comments. Keep them coming. Of course, we are very, very sad at the loss of Ma Winnie Madikizela Mandela. So it is indeed a crazy old world out there as we struggle to come to terms with how quickly everything is changing. Let's put on the brakes and see what <laughs> makes today historic. Some of those finer points throughout history. Absolutely. Starting off with this one, on this day, 1975, world chess champion Bobby Fischer forfeits his world chess title after refusing to defend it. I meant why. Bobby. Come on, buddy. Hey, did he have Get enough chess? I don't now. know, but, but yeah, he was brilliant, man. Oh, certainly rising to the occasion on this day back in 1936, the quickest <clears throat> knockout took place, lasting a wee 10 seconds mm. long. That record now has since been broken when um, Ricky uh, uh, Parkey, he floored Broderick Mason at eight seconds, and that was in the first round back in 1984. Yeah. I don't think that's them, though. No, no, no. That's, it's, a, it's a nice little <laughs> boxing picture right there. But yeah, listen, and how's this one for some, for some uh, a bit of a throwback? In uh, New York City, on the, the 3rd of April, 1973, the first portable cell phone was made. <laughs> now, this prototype offered an impressive talk time of about 20 minutes and took a very short 10 hours to recharge. <laughs> <laughs> makes, makes sense, man. That's our bite-sized dose of history. You go out there and seize the day. Make it one for the books. Well, we are taking a very quick break on your feel-good breakfast show. We have Brenda and a brand new Mac Cafe coffee barista, Princess, also joining us. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you guys? Oh, see, Princess is already serving up the delicious coffees for us. Well, we are taking a very quick break. How about you go fill up your coffee cups? When we get back, we'll show you ways on how to make the school holidays fun. And of course, it's Gaming Tuesday. All of that happening after the break. Okay.
Welcome back, you're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for tuning in for this shortened week. It's an unofficial Monday, is it? It's a fake Monday. It's a fake Monday, but uh, we're still going to bring you everything you need, like the entertainment news. What's happening? I feel like it's a very Amazonti real Wood. Tuesday because yeah, I was here yesterday. I don't know about y'all, but I was working. Um, of course, as yesterday, South Africa learned that struggle veteran Winnie Madikizela Mandela passed away at the age of 81 after a long illness for which he had been in and out of hospital since the start of the year. South Africans all over and also so so many people outside of South Africa and around the world poured in with messages of support to the family and shared some of their favorite Winnie Matikizela Mandela quotes. Now various celebrities took to Instagram to share their heartfelt messages and these are just some of the ones that we saw. International speaker and of course businessman Vusi Tembukwaya uh, said she sacrificed her family raising her children, her so health, her marriage, her career, her education, her community only to be shunned. We will never forget you mama, a true liberator. And I said, and I love this part where he says, before you share the negativity, let he who is without sin tweet first. I love that one. Um, also, let's move on to the next one. Um, Boiti also posted a tweet where she said, brave, strong, bold, courageous, fearless, rest in peace, mama, forever in our thoughts. And then, of course, Tembi Sieta said she was incredibly strong. She was a world leader, a hero, a legend. This moment was so special to me. So many people coming out in support. And I have to also say this one was the one that touched my heart the most. Jassy Smollett from Empire actually posted this as well where wow. he said, Mama, hashtag Winnie Mandela, rest in peace, power queen. Power Love queen that one. Indeed. That was awesome. And there are beautiful tributes continuing to pour in. And I think this, and you could see it on Twitter yesterday because I think like so many who sacrificed so much during that dark, very, very dark period. Yeah. So controversial as well. So this is obviously Absolutely. has a lot of people sitting on the fence, but all you can do now yeah. is pass on love and condolences to the Mandela family. That's it, leave it there. No. 100%, I agree with you, G. Well, let those beautiful <laughs> tributes continue to pour in as we quickly shift the attention to the school holidays and perhaps on ways for you to keep the kids entertained with a Thunderland festival. This school holiday, Grand West will be hosting their Funfold Funderland Festival, which is a unique expo designed especially to entertain kids. Funderland is all about the family unit. It's a family festival with an aim at the children and our youth. We're bringing it together for the family unit to have fun together. So we created this space so that there's an environment where mom and dad and the students, teenagers, toddlers, everybody can come together and have fun. It's very exciting because it's a traveling show. Every school holiday we plan to take it throughout South Africa so that everybody in our wonderful Rainbow Nation can have the, the experience so that it becomes an annual event that families can look forward to in each province. Committed to developing local talent, there's also a talent show for budding young stars of all kinds to showcase their unique skills. The talent show is a very exciting part of Funderland and it's uh, the core of it all. We've got a magnitude of talent in this country and there's no platform for everybody with no limitations. So the entries are digital, they enter via video entries um, on social media. From there we have the public involved and then we've got obviously our judges at the stage where they perform at Funderland. It's about talent and we want to give a platform for those who don't normally would have had the opportunity. I came for the talent show, the Munzadi talent show. I made it through to the semi-finals and right now just having fun with my friend. Open to any age group, the show will travel nationally with the finals during the December school holidays in Durban. We also have got uh, magicians, comedy, dancing. We want to showcase all types of art. 45 minute shows, mentalism, magic, humor. We're getting the kids involved. Everything is interactive. We make sure that the kids are drawn in in every way possible because we want them to experience what we're doing rather than just watching a show. So getting them involved is fundamental, absolutely. My experience at Funderland has been amazing because I get to do what I love and I met a lot of new people already. You need to interact with people. People like to laugh, they like to be a part of something. So you make them part of it, you do the, 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 the amazing tricks and then you have the, the comedy. 
So it's just the basics. These ones you can practice at home. Um, so just don't break the windows. From dinosaurs to gaming and technology, the festival creates endless fun for youngsters, which allows parents to relax. There's so much, but um, we've been to the Dinosaur Expo, and then we've been to the jumping castles. We've been on all of the rides. Right now we're gaming, so the guys are trying to figure out their way around the gaming station, teaching mom a thing or two. But so far, so good. You know, the kids don't want to go home. They're not finished at all, so they're really enjoying themselves. My son is quite a big gamer, and he loves gaming and that. Uh, he told me about Thunderland, so yeah, I came around here and I checked it out. I've never seen so much kids just coming just to make gaming that big, so it's quite exciting. For families, uh, a must to have fun and actually for the children to just enjoy themselves a little bit, just to come out for the day and actually for the school holidays and stuff. Although perfect for kids during the school holidays, the entertainment at this festival is tailored in such a way that it always allows for learning through play. The most exciting part here is that we are a fun, family-driven environment with experiential activities to bring out the kid and the parents, to teach our children uh, the values of all these great new developments, whether it's technology, whether it's sport, how to bring it all together. So there's a very strong educational undertone throughout. So we want to bring in learning through fun. No matter what your child is interested in, Funderland will cater for them with 28 varied fun zones and well-known artists to entertain boys and girls of all ages. Oh man, that looks like a whole lot of fun, definitely on my to-do list with my two boys. Princess joining us this morning, how are you Princess? I'm good, and you sir? Good, thank you. I'm gonna go with something different this morning. Please okay. can I get a white chocolate with chai? Okay, that Sounds thanks. amazing. Yes, something a little bit different. Shaking it up on your Tuesday. But listen, the Easter weekend might be over, you might be back at work, but the school holidays, of course, in full swing. So maybe you can squeeze in a little bit extra gaming time. Gareth Woods in the house, talk about World of Warriors. He is back on the couch. It's our gaming aficionado, Gareth Woods. Um, his beard game is extra strong this morning <laughs> with a long, relaxing weekend behind us. It's time for our Tuesday morning gaming review. And today we are getting stuck in. You've been, been kind of getting um, to terms with your, your character yeah, in the battle yeah, yeah. there, which looked pretty hardcore. But um, what are we playing, first of all? Cool. So before? it's World of Warriors. It's a, it might look cute, but there's quite a serious game behind it. It's, essentially all the warriors from throughout time. So from Genghis Khan and the boys to Shaka Zulu to, oh, I mean, cool. you name it, they're all in there. And um, we're gonna jump in into a, a battle now. And uh, yeah, essentially you're on your way to prove yourself as the best warriors of all time. So the I've got all- The ultimate warrior. The Rock, I'm gonna choose my team here. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch of guys I can choose from, I've unlocked, so- uh, Okay, so you've had to, how do you unlock them? Is there so, an yeah, as you, element to it? As you play through the game, you get collectibles and then you go to the uh, temple that kind of like beams down a random character and these are the guys I've unlocked. I'm playing with Keylock, who is some sort of badass uh, kind of barbarian dude. He looks up for it, man. Yeah. And who are you taking on Seems now? It's, Wang uh, and Ram. Ram and Wang. <laughs> <laughs> the, the infamous team of Ram and Wang. Um, it does look very cute, yeah. um, but it, it looks like, judging by your level of engagement, that there's something a greater depth to it. Yeah, so I mean, what, what happens is each of the stages tends to have a mechanic behind it, besides just like brawling to the death. It's, this one, for example, you've got this titan who's waging war on your ship as you're going, so... Design-like, you go. yeah. And you've also got your two sh warring ships here, so I can like activate the cannons here, so as you can see, I hit that and they, they open up a little bit. Oh, so you've got I'd, your boys, they've yeah. got your back, yo. So once I do it like three times, then it'll unlock and, oh, he parried me there. Sorry, yeah, um, I might be distracting you. No, no, no problem. I've got to be able to do this live on TV I, and also kick <laughs> ass. So yeah, come. I, I, I do have to admit the size of their heads I find yeah, quite it's distracting. Yeah, <laughs> um, But it is. It's, it, it does kind of take away that edge. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't look... I mean, the fighting looks bona fide, man. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you can dodge, roll, you parry, block. Uh, you've got a quick attack. You've got a heavy attack. You can load up your heavy attack. In fact, I'll try and do here too. No, oh. you blocked me, Mr. Titan dude. And you'll see those orbs as well that they kind of power up your superpower. Oh, you got your 
ham. You stole your, your oh, ham no. or your roast beef or whatever that was. And there, there's also mine, which he's going to try and pick up and throw at me so I can interrupt him before he does manage to do that. Um, how, how do we classify this? <laughs> what, what is it? It's, uh, I mean, it's a, a brawler kind of like hack and slash game, is, I suppose the term would be. But um, yeah, it's, it's got a nice mix in terms of, whoa, I, I haven't seen that special ability before. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I mean, it's got a nice mix of it's it's fun, but at the same time, it's challenging enough. I mean, certainly some of the hard levels later on. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent challenge. You can't just sit there jamming buttons. You've got to know You've your combos. You've got to think and, yeah. and kind of get into it, man. No, Carry I love at that, the right man. time. Yeah. Oh, is that our, our new? That's his special contender. power. So that's Ram. Yeah. So well, he's powered <laughs> up his sword, as you can see. Oh man, it, it looks cute, but it, I have to say that the gameplay looks pretty involved as well. So I think this ticks quite a few boxes. Is your crazy little berserker guy. guy? Come on, dude! Use your head. Just dying for one of them to just use the helmet. He's much faster than this guy, but he's uh, a little bit more squishy compared oh, to. Oh man, that is so cool! Um, so there we have it. World of Warriors on PlayStation, um, and it looks like a world of fun. World of fun, world of warriors, man. That looks amazing. Brenda, can I just say, my chocolate chai tea. That's the only thing I'm drinking for now. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank Bevan you. Samuels joining us right here, ladies and gentlemen, on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thank Dude, feel free to, to order something. I suggest go with what I'm having this morning. <laughs> it's really amazing. He just sound check for us. He's amazing. He's like the Chris Brown of South Africa. Zoe thinks he's better, though. We'll find out <laughs> after the break. And we're also understanding your pulse with Dr. Darren Greed a little bit later on in your health talk. Get a taste of the smooth island life and win big with Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives. Buy a Tropica, follow the entry details on the pack and you could win daily airtime prizes, Daniel Klein watches, American tourista luggage for your next adventure, vouchers from loot.co.za to shop the hot daily deals online and the grand prize of a Kia Picanto. For competition T's and C's, visit tropica.co.za and don't forget to watch Tropica Island of Treasure Maldives every Monday at 7.30pm on SABC3. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome to it. You tune into your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express, all right? You're on SABC3. Lovely to be hanging out with you on your Tuesday. But let's get into a little bit of fun this morning. It's time to check out some of the rather interesting, funny, and random things that we stumbled across on social media. Ladies. You know what? I always say whenever I'm in London, things like this never happen to me. I'm so <laughs> upset about it, all right? So in London, Craig David was on a, on a double decker bus traveling through London, and he decided to surprise some of the commu commuters with a rendition of his hit song, Seven Days. Now, 
the people that were on the bus said it was absolutely amazing. But check this out and see if you think the same thing too. When you're feeling all alone, I have to it's just call me, call me Monday. Oh. Took a for a drink on Tuesday. We gon' make it up by Wednesday. And on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we chilled on Sunday. Come on, that's amazing. Did you need... see how everybody got involved and just sang along as well? Why did you miss the bus? <gasps> oh man, because hey? I, I should take the bus. You I should never take, take the, the bus. bus. All right, well, uh, one of the taxi drivers also tweeted saying, come sing in my taxi. So who <laughs> knows if his career as a singer doesn't work out, he could just perform on, yes, on public transport. Yep. <laughs> People will love it. Well, something else you'll love as well is a kid's honesty. I mean, kids yeah. just, they know how to do the <laughs> yes. right things when the time's right. Like washing your hands after going to the bathroom but if you've got no one to help you, what do you do? You peek your head underneath the next stall to ask someone to help oh, you. Nini. So this little boy, the man's <laughs> name's Andrew, who was in Virginia in a restaurant. This little boy was uh, wow. peeking under the stall asking him to help Bro, and he wrong. whipped out his phone to record the conversation. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> He's still in the toilet. So the guy was on the toilet and this kid Basically, he came under the door to ask him to help, help him wash his hands. The honesty and the innocence of kids. I love well, it. The best oh part goodness. is at the end of the video, the boy realized this man's not going to help him wash his hands. So he opened the stall and left, left. it open. <gasps> no. Oh, that's so cute. I love kids, man. That's oh. awesome. Like my boy yesterday, when you asked him how was the performance of Terra Cox, he's like, it was great. It was a bit loud. <laughs> that's amazing. Listen, kids will say anything. Like, you just need a. Thank you, ladies. Oh, man, that was good fun. Which has video story has caught your attention online of course share your thoughts with us you can do so on our Facebook page and on Twitter as well using that hashtag Expresso Show. Now I know that's a pretty tough act to follow but I think this young man can do it. Uh, Bevan Samuels is here along with the sequence band guys welcome back and um, fast becoming our resident band here in studio. <laughs> I think from stealing votes on TV to now stealing hearts Bevan is busy making a name for himself embarking on his solo career and he is making waves in the process and you're going to find out exactly why an unbelievable voice that has to be heard to be believed and you're going to hear it right now with uh, Say You Won't Let Go.
there for me when I needed you most. I'm gonna love you till my lungs give up. I promise to death be born just like in our vows. So I wrote this song for you. Now everybody knows that it's just you and me. the wrong portion of the song for my Insta story, man. I should have saved it for that run at the end. That was amazing, dude. That was really, really cool. When you believe every word, we believe every word, and I sound just like a judge on a talent <laughs> show on TV, man. That was awesome, dude. No comparison to Chris Brown or anyone needed. You can let us know what you thought of that performance from Bevan Samuels. Hit us up on our social media platforms, at Expresso Show is the handle to use. In the national news this morning, struggle veteran and former wife of the late President Nelson Mandela, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, has died at the age of 81. She passed away yesterday afternoon at the Ned Kemp Mill Park Hospital in Johannesburg after a long illness for which she had been in and out of hospital since the start of the year. Madikizela Mandela was one of the greatest icons of the struggle against apartheid. Her activism and resistance to apartheid landed her in jail on numerous occasions, eventually causing her banishment to the small town of Brantford in the then Orange Free State. With Easter weekend 2018 done and dusted, South Africans will wake up to a new economic reality this week as three major consumer price increases kick in. The VAT increases moves from 14 to 15 percent on all taxable items, which means that for every 100 rand spent, 15 rand will go to the taxman. The levy on sugary beverages is now charged at 2.1 cents per gram of sugar content, and motorists will have to fork out 72 cents more for 95 octane, 69 cents for 93 octane, and 65.2 cents per litre for all grades of diesel. Now moving further abroad, in responses to a media question, the growing tensions between Russia and the West could be compared to the Cold War of the previous century. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov made several accusations. He said the UK and its Western partners were playing children's games in their response to the poisoning of ex-spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter in the UK. He also said they had disregarded all accepted behaviour and resorted to open lies and disinformation. 29 nations have expelled Russian diplomats because of the poisoning. And then finally, Israel has cancelled plans to deport migrants to Africa after striking a deal with the United Nations Refugee Agency. More than 16,000 asylum seekers will instead be resettled in unspecified Western countries, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office has announced. The rest, about 18,000, will be granted permanent residency in Israel. Israel's Supreme Court had blocked deportations meant to begin on Sunday. The new plan will be implemented over a five-year period. Well, that was your 7 o'clock news update. Let's get our very first look at what's happening in the world of sport. Graham has those details. <laughs> Well, it's turning out to be a pretty big week in the world of sport. Let's kick it off with the tussle currently underway in the world of cricket. Australia closed out day four in Johannesburg on 88 for the loss of three wickets yesterday. Still needing a massive 524 runs to beat South Africa in the fourth and final test of the series. Earlier in the day with uh, the foot clearly still on the jugular, Captain Fuff Duplessis put in a captain's innings, hitting 120 runs, helping the protest to clear on 344 to hold a second innings lead of 600 and 11. That final day of play of that final test 
gets underway at 10 a.m. today. All of the action going down right here on SABC3. Then staying with cricket, South Africa's Heinrich Klaassen has been called up to the Indian Premier League team, or to Indian Premier League rather, to serve as a replacement for Steve Smith, that of course with the Rajasthan Royals. Due to Smith's ball tampering ban, Klaassen comes into the tournament after making the ODI and T20 debuts for South Africa in February against India. The first game of the 2018 IPL takes place this coming Saturday as the Mumbai Indians host the Chennai Super Kings. Then it doesn't get much bigger than this in the world of football. The Champions League semi-finals get underway tonight with a repeat of last year's final as Juventus go up against Real Madrid. When the sides last met, Real Madrid secured their 12th Champions League title as they pulled off that very impressive 4-1 win in the final at the Millennium Stadium. And while Los Blancos tackle Juventus in Italy, Sevilla host Bayern Munich in tonight's other semi-final clash. Both of those games kicking off at a quarter to nine South African time. Then on to rugby, Pucker and Martis will contest the final of this year's Varsity Cup tournament after both teams secured victories in last night's semi-finals. Over in Stenabosch, Martis maintained their unbeaten run in the tournament as they scored 10 tries on their way to a 65-18 win over Wits. Unbelievably impressive for a knockout fixture that set up that home semi or that home final rather. And then in the night's other game, Pucker saw out another convincing win, 60-31. That was over the University of Johannesburg. So congratulations. Congratulations and well done to all the lads and that's where we leave our sport for now. Well, before we get into your traffic, let's quickly look at the petrol price update. The Department of Energy has announced that the price of 95 unleaded and leaded petrol in Gauteng will increase by 72 cents a litre and at the coast by 62 cents a litre with effect from Wednesday. 93 unleaded and leaded petrol will increase by 69 cents a litre in Gauteng and 59 cents a litre at the coast, while diesel prices will go up by 65 cents a litre in Gauteng and 55 cents uh, a litre at the coast. Well, with traffic in Bedford View and Gauteng, there's a stationary vehicle that's on the R24 eastbound. It's after the Edenvale Road and it's blocking the left lane, so please proceed with caution. That's where I leave your traffic. I'll have a final update for you at 8 o'clock. Thank you so much, Zoe. Let's quickly take a look at your temperatures once again. It's just after 7 o'clock and it looks like a couple of thunder showers can be expected for the northeastern region of the country today with mild temperatures. However, some nice and warm temperatures can be expected for the rest of the country as well. Let's run you through quickly. Paul Aquane, 14 minimum with a maximum 26 degrees. Mombela, 16, 30. Pretoria, thunder showers today, 15 minimum and a mild maximum of 24 degrees. A couple of thunder showers for Johannesburg as well, 14, 23. Mike Eng, 16, 26. Klaxdorp on 15 minimum with a mild maximum of 24 degrees and thunder showers expected. Kimberley 16, 24. Bloemfontein 13, 24 degrees. Richards Bay starting off on 22 minimum and a nice and hot maximum of 32 degrees. Peter Marisburg 18 minimum with a maximum 27 and some scattered showers expected. Durban can expect them some uh, thunder showers for your Tuesday. 23 is your minimum with a maximum 28. Ntata 18, 25. East London 19, 25. Craddock 16 minimum with a maximum 28 degrees and a chance of thunder showers in the area. Port Elizabeth 1823, George 1722, Sutherland on 13 minimum reaching a high of 26 degrees and also a couple of thunder showers expected. Cape Town 1526, Worcester 1430, Springbok 1628 and Uppington on 17 minimum reaching a high of 27 degrees. You can also expect a couple of thunder showers there in the area. That's a wrap of your weather for the 7 o'clock bulletin. I've got a final update heading your way just after 8. Well, we are taking a very quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we're going to spend some time in the kitchen cooking up some egg fried rice. Exactly. Yummy. And then the doctor is in the house. Dr. Darren Green, he's here. Morning. He made it. And we're talking about the pulse this morning and how yes. it works. Do I have one? Feel it. It is here. Yeah. Calling everyone and anyone who has ever dreamed of becoming a television superstar. Presenter Search on 3 is looking for the newest and hottest television talent in South Africa to become the brightest stars on SABC3. You'll need to impress our expert panel of judges to make sure that the spotlight finds you. 
This year's judges are South Africa's sweetheart and TV presenting legend, Jeannie D. One of the country's most preeminent TV producers with a knack for finding top talent, Patience Stevens. Spusiso Kumalo, head of brand marketing at Capitec, knows how a presenting career can help you live better. Last but definitely not least, the radio maverick with a golden voice, the big dog himself, DJ Fresh. I want the kind of people to audition who are savvy, who are thinkers, who are ambitious, who really want to focus on this as a career, not just as an easy road to being famous. You really need something special. I'm looking for a little bit of magic. To be a presenter is more than just how you carry yourself on TV. It's everything else, how you manage your finances, how you grow your social media following, how you carry your brand on and off the screen. It's asking a lot more of the people that are coming to enter this competition. As a judge, what I'm looking for in a top TV presenter is someone with charm, charisma, someone who commands people's attention so that when they walk into the room, they have an immediate presence and everybody knows this is the presenter of the show and they're drawn to them and attracted to them. Why would you want this gig? I think, why not? Why would you not want to uh, be in front of the camera? Why would you not want to be on this stage at SABC3 in the first place? If TV is what you love, then uh, this is the perfect place to start. It might be a bit of a deep end for some, but you know that's sometimes the best time to learn how to swim. Join us, the stage is yours. Presenter Search on 3, proudly brought to you by Capitec and Mac Cafe. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show. It's Espresso. Now time for us to focus our attention on our health segment. And measuring your pulse is a quick and simple health indicator that you can check for yourself. But that's if you know what you're looking for. So today we're going to step into the world of health with our resident doc, Dr. Darren Green, who's here in studio to teach us what to keep in mind when measuring our pulse. I tried measuring Leanne and I'm like, I can't find it. And she's like, you're dead. I was like, no, I want to be alive. How are you, Dr. Dan? Fabulous, so good thanks. Good to see you. Um, okay, so I know it's going to be an obvious question, but okay. just for those of us who need context, what exactly is a pulse and how exactly is the processes of it being a pulse set up? Yeah, so it's, it's a sign that you're alive, firstly. Let's start there. That's that. That it's is a, a sign, good sign. It's a sign that the, <laughs> the mechanisms and, the, and the, the, the pump that's responsible, which is your heart, yeah. of getting blood to the vital organs of your body, that includes your brain, your heart, your kidneys, your gut, the muscles, etc. You need all that uh, to survive and to make the most of your life. So if you don't have oxygen and nutrients being delivered to those areas, you die. 
uh, or they die, really, the, the organs first, and then you will surmise. But so what the pulse actually represents is what happens uh, in the heart. Yeah. So, you know, you've got chambers of the heart called the atrium and the ventricles, and they, they move in a beautiful synchronized way when the heart contracts and relaxes. Yeah. And that's like blood pressure, systolic, diastolic. Mm -hmm. And what the pulse represents, it's an extension of that pressure wave as the heart contracts in the blood vessel system. So when you actually feel the pulse, for example, what you're actually feeling is that trans absolutely translated pressure yeah. wave coming from the heart contracting and relaxing. Okay, Fantastic. well, maybe I've been watching too many medical dramas in Grey's Anatomy, but when measuring your pulse, you were yes. referring to your wrist, and I know they often go here in the neck. Carotids, um, yeah. Where do you measure for your pulse? Yes, yeah, so you can measure it peripherally. If your blood pressure has a systolic of 90 or more, you will feel the peripheral pulse, or the what's called the ra radial pulse. Yeah. Uh, and that obviously is the thumb side, and it's at the level of the wrist, and you take your two or three fingers like that, with, and you depress the area to feel, obviously, whether the blood vessel itself, the arterial blood vessel, carrying oxygen-rich blood, presses against the t fingertips. Yeah. And I that's where it. you'd feel there. And yeah. you can check, obviously, centrally, yeah. which is closer to the heart. Those are more strong. Those are the, uh, the carotid pulses, for example. And uh, you can check in the groin as well. What are some of the main factors that you've got to take into account when looking for a pulse? Yes, so we, we look at a few things. We look at the volume load. We look at the rhythm of the pulse. Yeah. The volume tells you what the blood, blood volume in the system is. It tells you what the pressure, the blood pressure is. And then the rhythm is actually very important. It tells you whether the heart is beautifully uh, moving in synchrony. In other words, whether it's timed perfectly and the periods are the same every time yeah. of relaxing and contracting which is important because you get what's called deadly rhythms where the heart becomes irregular and leads to further complications health-wise. So the pulse character, volume, the rhythm, all that's very important. It tells us about other disease processes. Okay. Well, I was feeling my pulse right now. It felt pretty strong, but yes. how do you know how healthy your pulse is? Is it a weak pulse? And of course, what does all of this indicate? We're talking about mm. heart health and your pulse this morning. A little bit more after this with Dr. Darren Green. Oh, time for a quick and easy recipe. Uh, can I just put the brakes on quickly and, and say why I love this show so much is because we are constantly finding healthy alternatives that we get to introduce into our own lives. This dude. is the thing, man. It's magic. So this morning we're going to uh, whip up some egg fried rice. Um, one thing I fear more than coriander is shellfish. Okay, so I'm you allergic to it. So you I'm not stay touching away. this, and it's not it's not I'll a personal judgment, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to keep a safe <laughs> distance. I'm going to hang um, by. I think the one product that might actually have a lower body fat percentage than you, dude, <laughs> with less than seven percent um, fat. The, the, it's the lowest saturated fat of all cooking oils. We're talking about the Be Well Canola Oil. That's it. That's Probably our hero the healthiest today, man. Oil to cook with on the market, undoubtedly. Listen, let me so start off. Let me start off. Somebody use some of our Be Well Canola Oil just in a hot pan. All right, just a little bit. So what we've done is we've kind of pre-cooked our eggs. We've got some prawns here. Stay away, but it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm going to start glazing or sweating some onions, all right? And you want to have the onions kind of like, like large chunks. You want, yeah. to say, you want to have it a fine have a, have a bit of body, yeah? Absolutely. So nice and hot. Listen, this was my favorite dish when I was traveling Asia for so years. Time, yeah. Oh man, the best on the go kind of breakfast, lunch. <laughs> Don't well, know thing is you're getting matter. protein, but you're also gonna get a nice kind of carb kick to, to give you the energy that you need. But bucket loads of flavor absolutely. that I absolutely love. And then you've got the, the healthy injection of your Be Well Canola. Um, naturally high in omega-3 fatty acids, which our That's brains it. need, our bodies need. Um, but this is endorsed by the Heart and Stroke Foundation of South Africa. And we're talking about your pulse today. We want to keep that pulse beating yes. strong and firm, as the doc says. It just lets you know that you're alive. That's it. Not from anything else. So listen, dude. So we got our rice obviously pre-cooked as well. And now we're frying it. All right. So obviously Egg you want to make rice. sure that there's not a lot of moisture in there. Yeah. Exactly, so we got, the, it, we got yeah? the oil, the Biwa canola oil in there, all right? So we got the rice now, so what we're doing is just heating it through so it can separate nicely, and this is gonna also make a nice and flavorful dish for it as well. We're gonna start spicing it right now. And so what I've got here, mm. teriyaki sauce, dude. Teriyaki sauce. Straight to Asia, bam. Just like that. Some soy sauce. Oh, man. All right, that goes in there as well. We want to sweat a bit of chili in there as well. <laughs> I was gonna say, just watch those fumes coming off there now, baby. There's right. a lot of... Flavor and spice. There we go. You have to smell this. It smells absolutely amazing. Right, at this stage, let's get that out of here. And I know a lot of people, they want to cook their eggs in the morning with butter because of that, that lovely buttery taste. But what I love about the Be Well Canola oil, it gives you that velvety, buttery taste That's from it. the get-go as well. Okay, some spring, spring onions. onions. Nice. Some peas. peas. Absolutely. And now, dude. So this is actually quite wholesome. 
piece of boot, man. Mm. You, this is beautiful. Now we've got our pre-prepared prawns in there. All right, once again, Graham, stay away, please. <laughs> I'm I think like, I can still remember is, the taste as well, which is, is a hard This is sad, man. man, that you can't actually eat this. So we're heating this through, and then, of That's course, lovely. our eggs as well, that we've just kind of pre-made and pre-cooked. And just scramble it. I love it. So if you'd like this ingredients list sent directly to you, the keyword is be well. Together, it's one word, be well, to double three seven. And I mean, look eight. how easy that was. Because everything is kind of pre-prepped as well, that's all we need. Let me dish it up. I'm having to minutes. fight my instincts here. This is like my mouth is watering so much because it looks so amazing. Oh, dude, well done. Get some prawn in there as well. I know one of our, our cameramen is really happy that I can't have any of this an extra portion to go around. Look, on the bright side, there's no coriander there. <laughs> <laughs> you should have put coriander in this one, man. This would have All right, dude. One. There we oh, have it. Oh, that looks amazing, Quick bro. and easy, just like that. It'll transport you straight to Asia. It's going to have a beautiful flavor to it as well. Yeah, and we're also looking after our health, our health and our heart in the process. So thank you so much for that, dude. Now, you better have a taste and tell me what I'm, it tastes I'm so like, having man. a taste, but I don't have a spoon, use man. Use the giant spatula if you have to. <laughs> use use your hands. <laughs> the keyword is be well. It's a visit to 3378. The recipe will be on our website, expressoshow.com, a little bit later on. This is as well. far as I can take it. Oh, it's amazing, dude. We're here with our uh, health professional and expert, <laughs> Dr. Darren Green, in the house. We're talking about heart health and understanding your pulse. Now, a little bit earlier on, we spoke about the rate of the pulse. Yes. But also now, I want to talk about the strength of the pulse. What if your pulse is weak? What does that indicate about? Okay. your current health status. So if you've got the heart and all the pipes connected to it, it's a closed system. So what that actually means is that the pressure in the system might be low. In other words, if you're not feeling it in the peripheral areas that yes. we spoke about, like the yes. radial pulse, means that the pressure generated within this closed system might be low as well. Okay. Often when you're in shock or when you've had a heart attack and the pump is actually uh, broken, oh. <laughs> or there's a, an issue obviously yeah. with septic shock, uh, then that happens. Your peripheral pulses obviously become fast, but also the volume goes down. How do you know if you have a weak pulse? Because, I mean, if you're measuring your own pulse, how would you know it's weak or not? Yeah, so firstly, if you struggle to actually feel it, okay. uh, then you'll know. Because normally yeah. it's something that's bounding and quite easy, and if you know where to feel, and also how much to depress uh, the, the vessel before you get a response, uh, that's quite important. And then test it in a, in a, in a bigger artery, as well and correlate, you know, okay. in the neck, for example, uh, and then compare the two, that yeah. helps. Okay. Um, I, I've experienced heart palpitations before. I'm sure Usually you have. Usually when you take a, a, a young supplement that a young, helps with... A young <laughs> supplement. <laughs> yeah, right. that helps with the metabolism, <laughs> and then heart's going... <laughs> when should you yes. be concerned when it comes to heart palpitations? So normal pulse rate is between 60 and 100 for an average adult. Uh, children often have higher pulse rates, by the way. It's not because they're in a heart failure or dying. Yeah. Just remember that. Your pulse rate as an adult between 60 and 100. We call it tachycardia if it's above 100. Uh, uh, obviously, and if it's below uh, 50, we call it bradycardia, too slow. Okay. So you should worry if your heart resting pulse rate is above 100. Okay. Well, Doctor, you know, earlier we were talking about a weak pulse. We've now spoken about heart palpitations. Yes. Is it possible for you to have too strong of a, a pulse. Is that the same? Yeah, some people's bound and they can feel it You're right here in the temporal area, sometimes when you're sleeping at night. Yeah. Yes. Or your thumbs and your fingertips start, Eric. start throbbing. Yeah. yeah so, stressed, Eric. <laughs> yeah, you can actually feel, and, and that's often due to people that have hypertension often have that, and then hyperdynamic circulation. Sometimes, even with really strong athletes, you'll find they've got really, really strong bounding pulses. Yeah. Uh, it could signify valvular disease as well in the system, in other words, heart valve disease, if it's pathological. But uh, generally, it's a sign of, of the pressure reaching really high levels in that time. What can you do in that moment? Because, you know, you know, I know I'm differentiating here now between a strong heartbeat and your pulse, but it's, you know, you sometimes by breathing, you can calm your heart rate, but wh Definitely. what do you do when your pulse is really, really strong, like you said, bounding? Yes, yeah, so I mean, so, so the heart, the rate of control of the pulse, you've got special nerve tissue in the heart uh, called the, in the sinus, that's called the sinus node. Mm -hmm. And you've got a sinus node and an AV node, and they, the one speeds up the heart, and the one slows down the heart rate, and that's a nerve supply to the actual muscle. It communicates to the heart chambers and the muscle itself saying, slow down or pick up. Obviously, you see someone take their shirt off, your heart rate goes up. It's an emotional response, and the nerve supply is also busy involved with that. 
And the same happens, obviously, with different receptors that yeah. are stimulated with caffeine and energy drinks that you mentioned as well. Yeah, okay. fantastic. Well, we're going to talk about our pulse a little bit more after this and exercise and, of course, how those two come together mm -hmm. in a beautiful love relationship. All that and more coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Dr. Green is in the house. If you have a question or comment, please do give us a call 021-430-9881. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso. We have Dr. Darren Green with us in studio as we continue to talk and understand our pulse. Now, Dr. Darren Green, earlier, Leanne was talking about exercising and, you know, um, yes. with your heart rate. When it comes to your pulse and monitoring it, how do you know this is a good figure, this is my, because you know they often say do a workout um, using 60% yes. heart rate. Good question, great. So you work out your, your maximal heart rate by saying 220 minus your age. Okay. And uh, obviously if you're a lady, you work it out by saying say 200 minus your age. Uh, that's your maximal heart rate. And that's 100%. I'd, yes, that's 100%. So if you're 40 and you, t and you take 220 minus, well, that's 180. So it, if they say train in the zone, that's, uh, that's safe for you to get fitter, but not put your heart under too much stress, like 80% of your maximal heart rate, it'll be 80% of 180, which is 150 something, I think. And that's how you can monitor it. And that's how you can, so you train in zones. People that use, obviously, the heart rate monitors when they're running, training, cycling, they obviously set them, the alarms to go off. When the pulse rate goes to 180 or 160, they know that they know how to push on the bike or in the pool or even running. So it's wonderful to understand that that tells you how much strain is exerted on the heart. Remember, obviously, you can complicate things by what you're ingesting in terms of medication, in terms of stimulants, tea, coffee, etc. as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you are exercising, how long should you wait before your heart rate or your pulse returns to normal? Yeah, so normally the, the fitter you are, the yeah. quicker it returns to normal. Yeah. And that's one of the tests standardized with a lot of the medical aids fitness assessments, by yeah. the way. Um, and that's, that process, within 10 minutes, you should be back to your normal yeah. pulse rate. People that do ultra endurance events mm. still have a bit of an elevated heart rate for uh, up to two hours afterwards, which is quite yeah. interesting. Remember, the resting morning pulse is quite indicative of your fitness level as well so for an athlete that's a seasoned athlete that normally has a pulse rate of 49 or 45 in the morning having an, a resting pulse of 80 is high for him yeah okay. should one be taking these supplements though you know those that energy boosters or increase your, your yeah so the, the issue is the supplements give people energy and they use the supplements often for energy. I'm speaking about stimulants. Of course. Speaking about things that contain taurine, guarana, caffeine, all yeah. these things. And the issue is that they have the ability to accelerate your heart rate besides yeah. doing the exercise, the dancing, the trance raving, whatever you're doing. And then it puts you at risk of developing an abnormal heart rhythm. Oh. 
that actually could be harmful to you. Yeah. And that's what people need to understand. Absolutely. Uh, well, we did get a call a little bit earlier on, right. and um, the person wanted to remain anonymous, but he asked, why is it um, that his heart rate increases every time he sees Zoe? <laughs> on the TV. Yeah, there's, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people so that see <laughs> Zoe and their heart rate just like goes through the roof. Thanks, thanks for helping South Africa get fit, guys. Thank you. But uh, yeah, so there, there is an emotional response, obviously, from the brain yes. that uh, that increases the the nerve supply to yes. that atrium that says hello, and then uh, and then that obviously increases blood supply and oxygen delivery everywhere. It's a real okay. thing. Well, it's well, a real thing. How can you calm the thing. heart rate down? <laughs> Close your eyes, moment. don't look. <laughs> I can't look at you. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Darren Green, for being here and, of course, helping Good us understand you. more about the pulse and how it works. It's always very Fancy. interesting and very enlightening, um, you know, being able to talk about these things. Well, thank, thank you. you for having us, and we'll see you again next week. Yes, and to that guy, now you understand why your heart rate increases when you see Zoe Brown. It happens. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe, for keeping South Africa fit. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Right now, though, we are continuing with, let's say, the topic of matters of the heart and health as well. Now, athletes functioning at the leading edge of their sports know better than most that essential nutrients and getting them in the right amounts are key to their bodies functioning reliably and performing at the top of the game when they need it to uh, most. So right now, let's put under the spotlight the world mountain bike champs. <laughs> At the Stellenbosch leg of the World Mountain Bike Championships, we met world-class endurance athlete and Swiss national champion, Ramona Kupferschmidt. I started my bike career 12, mountain biking in races. I competed in races. Once I was in France, biking with my family, and I took some awesome trails, and I, I was really uh, overwhelming, and I really liked it, and these technical sections, and so, yeah, then I thought, ah, oh, this is my sport. The highlight of my career is really the Swiss champion title in 2014. This was amazing. The, the, this feeling was, oh my gosh, I did it because I, it was my wish and my, uh, it was my wish the whole year. Yes, I wanted going to be a Swiss champion, U17, and I reached it. So I was so happy. And I also uh, competed in the European Championships, Youth European Championships, and there I was uh, first with the team. As a primary part of her fitness, performance and recovery, Ramona uses Swiss nutritional supplement Biostrath, a natural food supplement to meet and maintain her body's nutritional needs through training and competition. I do some uh, endurance training. These are most uh, long, long sessions, so three, four, five hours on the bike or on the um, road bike. I train a lot of the, on the road bike because you can, you can better do the endurance thing. And I also do uh, force training. I have a, a small uh, room in, the, in our house where I can do uh, the hard things for, for the muscles, where the muscles are burning. <laughs> it's not that easy to train in Switzerland in the winter because it's really, it's really uh, cold and there's a lot of snow. And now it was really hard to get to South Africa because in Switzerland was minus 10 uh, degrees and here it was plus 35 degrees. So. Uh, this was really hard the first few days. But I usually do in Switzerland a lot of cross-country skiing, and this is really a different training. So you're not only the whole year, you're not only on the bike. So I, I actually love winter in Switzerland because it's, it's something different. Biostrath is the ideal supplement as its 100% natural formulation is safe for professional athletes. There are no stimulants or additives. It supports her immune system, restores energy, assists with recovery and increases overall stamina. I take Biostrath two to three times uh, per day and I think it strengthens my immune system. So I really get less sick 
and I, I, have, I have more energy during the day, I'm less tired and that's really important for, for uh, an athlete. I think it's, it's amazing that uh, Bystrat is 100% natural because it's, it, these days it's, it's hard to find uh, a good product where you can trust and it's really natural and these 16 neutrals are, I don't know how, how they are making this but it works and I think it's, it's really good for your body. Biostrath has been there to assist professional and amateur athletes for over 50 years. But what else would Ramona say is the secret to her success and fulfillment? I would say uh, live your dreams and do what you love. Because when you love what you do, then you are going to be good. Performing on race day is first prize. But allowing your body to recover for the next day's training and competition is just as important. Biostrath is the natural choice for athletes and families of all ages to give your bodies what it deserves to work at its very best. Only Biostrath gives your body more than 60 of the essential nutrients it needs every day. Biostrath, get what you need naturally. Oh, the time has come yet again to stand up against bullying. This August, some of the biggest names in sport and I think just in entertainment culture here in South Africa are going to step into the ring to fight against bullying. All, um, I think, in aid of Bullyproof 2018, yes, but in, in aid of promoting a healthier culture around sport, around young men, around young people, around hardcore athletes like the two gentlemen sit, sitting beside me. Not to say you're not a hardcore athlete, Bruce, Bruce <laughs> yeah. Benjamin. <laughs> but uh, Corne Kruger, Ryan Boerter, guys, welcome to it, man. Thanks. Thank you. You know, Ryan, I'm conflicted, bro. You know I love you like a brother, dude. I, I really do love you. But it's Corne <laughs> What the fuck are, are you stupid, him, trust me. bro? Are you stupid? <laughs> now, this is going to be one of the coolest matchups, I think, on the fight card. Corne, always so cool to see you, man. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm always catching up with you at, the, at these, these bizarre times. Where you've just come off a reality show and you've lost 50 kilograms. You've done a Cape Epic. You, are you just a sucker for punishment? What, what was the, the motivation to get in the ring, yeah, man? Look, um, I think it's two ways. You know, I, I, I like to have a challenge every year. Um, and that's why I do all these crazy events. I've done the Ironman in one year, then I've done Epic in another year. So I try and do one, one series, something, silly something, every different, year. <laughs> something different every year. Um, and this year, you know, Bruce approached me and said, look, would you consider fighting for, uh, you know, a, as an anti-bullying campaign? And I thought, you know, it's great. I've heard about the Jake Foundation that look after, you know, the, the, they do some amazing. They stuff, do some yeah. amazing work, and I thought, you know, it'll be a great challenge. And I think it's been, you know, training hard, and is what I love to do anyway. But also to, to understand, try and understand the culture and the, uh, you know, the discipline that it takes to to box, you know. Yeah. And, it's and an art so form, I've just yeah. really started now uh, with Bruce a couple of weeks ago. And I've, I've learned a lot in a, in a few weeks. I know Bruce is amazed at, at the work rate. So put it in perspective, Ryan, you are his epic this year. You are his epic, <laughs> no, dude. No, I realized that when you said that to me, I was like, you get the boys, but obviously... Um, buddy, I mean, you're coming back from a, a very serious injury. How is the, the leg doing? How are you... How well, are I'm walking, which is, a, which is amazing. I'm grateful for that. I wasn't meant to. So, you know, like Cornet says, he also likes a challenge. So do I, you know. So I want to see if I can push to the point. I can, you know, I can take this challenge on again, you know. So... It's something that challenged you constantly, and I've been there. It was a great experience. This is something I always looked up to as a young sportsman. So it's, it was it's a, a bit was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's you crazy know? I'm going to want to hug him after. <laughs> so for me, it's going to be one of those. You know? You're going to hug him before <laughs> and after. Before and during it. Being some of my shit. We're just going to be constantly breaking you guys exactly. up. Exactly. Uh, Bruce, uh, Bullyproof is something that you've chosen to invest a huge amount of yourself in. What, what is it about this campaign, about bringing these kind of stars together? For this, it makes it so special for you, man. Well, they, I mean, again, they're, they're national influences. So um, our kids, obviously, growing up and following their example with, uh, again, through the sports of, of boxing, the discipline, the self-awareness that comes with that as well. Um, yeah, it's a huge element to actually combating this uh, pandemic, which is bullying. Yeah. I think a lot of people want to see you guys train. They want to see what's going on behind yeah. the scenes. It's, it's a nice long build-up. How do we follow? How do we see and, and get, in, get involved? Gosh, I mean, uh, obviously uh, you can, we're, we're on Facebook and Instagram as it is now. Uh, we'll be re revealing a lot more about the, obviously the, the training dates and the, the dates of the, the fights as well. 
um, but then we'll be doing tons of tons of inserts and we'll basically keep the viewer informed via. Uh, we're going to have to bring you back, I think, on a weekly basis yeah. to, to match that that progression. How much about the, the rest of the fight card do you guys fight card do you guys know? Are there any big big names that you there's a couple of boys we've both been around and for a long time, like Matthew Booth's there, and I really want to see Boothy fight. I mean, that boy's like seven foot two, reach for days. Would you have taken him on? Uh, a how? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get close to him? This is already a struggle for me, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah that's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting fight for me. And there's always some girls fighting as well, like Roxy Lowe's in the mix, you know, that's going to be interesting to watch her fight. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Corne, do you have any last words, some smack talk? For your your opponent, yeah. <laughs> Not really. I think boxing is about uh, it's about respect. And and I read something in the gym the other day that really um, it struck me is don't be defined by the result, but be defined by the journey. You yeah. know? And I think that's whether whether I win or not. I think I'm I'll, I'm going to be defined by the journey. And obviously, you know, the respect between myself and Ryan uh, uh, in the build up to that, and also afterwards. You know, whoever wins, it doesn't matter. You know. It, it's all about the cause, but also about your personal challenge and, and what you're going to go through in the next few weeks. Honestly, buddy, it will change you. I, I can love speak that. from that's personal epic, experience. Like that. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's what this is about. You so know basically, I mean? it's rugby versus football. <laughs> we'll find out who's going to be the ultimate winner. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're probably going to have both of these guys and Bruce back on the show many times before August <laughs> getting into that journey. But you can, of course, go and support the JAG Foundation. Hashtag bullyproof is what it's all about. Well, Cape Town, I hope you are ready because that's where it all started for me. This weekend, we'll see the next set of presenters search on three auditions right here in the Mother City. And this season is proudly brought to you by Mac Cafe and Capitec. And the auditions will be held on Saturday and Sunday. That's the 7th and 8th of April. That's this weekend at the DHL Newlands Rugby Stadium. Gates will open at 8 a.m. So make sure that you get there nice and early and you're ready to impress. All you have to do is register at the gate and prepare a short link that will show the judges that you are ready to be the new face of SABC3. Cape Town is notorious for producing some of the best talent, so make sure you bring your A-game. For more information and all of the details on the list of audition venues in a city near you, you can visit the website that's presentersearchon3.com. Just like that, it's going to be a big weekend in Cape Town. Make sure you are there. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, JP Sebastian in the house talking about some brand new movies releasing this weekend. Seven Days in Entebbe. Do I say it correctly? Is it Seven Days in Entebbe? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, we'll and find out popcorns. pretty soon. We'll also find out about this man. Conrad Koch is in yes. the house, everybody. Woo. And we're talking about his brand new show, Puppet Guy. All that and more coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show. <laughs> <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show. It's Expresso. We also have a very special guest with us, Conrad Koch. You hey, are here. how's it going, guys? Guy. Hello, hello. Not the, and Chester. Chester's Chester. there as well. Thank we must you. forget the Chester. Yo, guy. That's rude, eh? <laughs> So listen, I don't get any sleep and they forget me, just you. Oh, well listen, you've joined us at the perfect time because we're about to do some international entertainment news. So, oh, la, la. You, you yeah. love international entertainment news. Yeah. Now we all know from her involvement with the Kardashians and trying to keep up with them that Black China is not someone that you want to mess with, especially as a mother. Now on Easter Sunday, 
This was Easter Sunday, guys. Black China was involved uh, in an altercation with an unidentified woman at a theme park in California. Now, the reality star took her son, King Cairo, and daughter, Dream Kardashian, to the theme park for a family day when an unknown woman tried to touch her baby. And, of course, uh, when Black China would allow it, she called Black China a herd rat. Now, Ooh. what we see here is China walking away, and then we see a scuffle with a security and the unidentified woman. But when the camera goes back to China, China's got a pink little trolley that naturally Dream was in, and she wanted to take the trolley. <laughs> and hit or throw the trolley at the woman. Uh, she then was quickly taken away and um, uh, the other lady was also taken away by security. Now, there are various reports on what happened, but Black China took to her Instagram to basically say, being famous is hard enough dealing with scrutiny, but when someone feels comfortable to come and touch your child, it's a whole other story. And then she continued to say, I do not condone violence, nor am I a violent person, but shout out to all the amazing mothers out there that will protect their children at any cost love king and dreams mommy so um yeah i think that she just she went crazy when somebody tried to touch her child chess i'm sure you would do the same thing of right? course of course if someone touches him i go crazy when I someone go crazy. your son i mean this is your son like come on we yeah, understand Floyd that she's do it do it never mind <laughs> <laughs> tried it. Now, can you trust a man whose friends all live in suitcases and only speak when he makes them? Wow. Well, ventriloquist, wow. performer and comedian, <laughs> Conrad Koch is that guy. And we only trust that he and his friends will be making us all roll with laughter as his new show, Puppet Guy, starts tonight at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town. He joins us in studio this morning to tell us more. Conrad Chester, so good to have hello, you Hello, hello. Hey guys, show. thanks hello. for having me. It's, I, I always love coming on to Express. We love the show. Well, we love having you here. Thanks, and man. I, mean, I love it. Well, great to have you here, Got too. Cappuccino. Well, that's right. What's it called? Express Expresso. I love it. Uh -huh. I love it. Thank well, you for getting the name right, Chester. Yes, you know that it's coffee related. I know that. That's true. Okay. Well, Conrad, you often get uh, compared to ventriloquist, American ventriloquist, uh, Jeff Dunham. That happens, how do you yes. Feel? How do you feel when people compare you? Well, I mean, he's the uh, highest profile ventriloquist in the world. You could argue the best. So, you know, uh, whether you agree with his politics or not, so it's, a, it's an honor. And um, it, this show in particular, if you like what Jeff Dunham does as far as just really fun ventriloquism, there's crazy characters, I'm there, he's there, it's, it's insane. They got a Julius, not that yet. No, no, just don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> they're, we they're wearing ESS red. They are both. They look, we you are both look today. like you work for Anthsa. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the show is really fun ventriloquism. I think that's why this one in particular is getting compared. Uh, it, it, it's, I do Snapchat on stage. I oh, get, wow. You know Snapchat? Yes. So we get, I've got a massive cell phone. Like it's Wonderful. huge. It's the size of an old Nokia. It's enormous. Sure. <laughs> Don't you Insta story? Uh, it, and, well, the, we should, but the thing is, it's live. Okay. Yeah. So we actually make someone talk. So I take your face, put it through a Snapchat filter, oh, wow. and then it makes you talk. It's crazy. Fantastic. Did I hear that when it comes to the show, you're moving away from political commentary a lot and less actually politics, focus yeah. on characters? Do you want characters. to tell us more about that? Yeah, well, the, the, the vibe has always been that you need to have read the newspaper to see yes. one of my shows. That is not the case with this show. Oh, it, it's okay. for anyone in the world can understand. It's really fun. Anyone 13 and up, just really fun. Uh, I've got like a, a mosquito puppet who's like, Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a really annoying sound. Yes. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, who's all in your squad? You have Chester. <laughs> you have Hillary, the ostrich. Oh, well, Hilton. Uh, Hilton is a new ostrich. You'll oh. see, it's made out of. I make him out of feather dusters and a slipper during oh, the show. Oh yes. Uh, I've got a DJ puppet, for example. A lot okay. of puppets made out of nothing. Hey, you should work at SABC. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Wow. Dude, Moving along what? swiftly, what? Chester pulls no <laughs> punches. No, come on. No, but it, it, it is really fun, like a, 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 a hoodie. I take my hoodie off and I turn it into a DJ. Mm -hmm. And we actually DJ an iPad. We've got a, so I re, but I DJ with my feet. You have to see it. That sounds incredible. Are you on Flucker? No. <laughs> on Flucker? <laughs> what the hell? What's wrong with you? Oh, oh my word. How Why? does Chester feel about the rest of the, the crew? The crew. It's offensive. It's offensive. Imagine Leanne got another character and sat on her lap there. It would be annoying. Well, wow, that's kinky. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be a guy, though? That's the question. Well, I don't know. Those earrings are awesome. I like this. Thank you. Thank you, Chester. Whenever you get a compliment from Chester, you must take it and run. And run, I know. It'll change very, very quickly. What do you think audiences are going to love about this show? Uh, just that it's really fun. 
It's just really fun. Uh, that's why uh, the, the politics gets very intense, you know, it especially does, with what's yeah. happened in our past and what's happened currently, you know, with corruption and stuff. So, so this show is more about just anyone can come have a really fun time. I mean, we turn someone into a lion at the end of the show and then they hunt someone else in the wow. audience. So I think what makes this exceptional yeah. is there's a space where all South Africans of all types can come and just have a huge amount of fun. We do deal with race and politics a little bit. There's a little bit about what's happened in the last yeah. few months, but not a huge amount. I talk a little bit about the Zuma rides, but not a lot. aren't a right. They're also missing now, so. Yes, yes. It's softer. It's softer, yes. Lots softer. Who's your daddy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chester and Conrad, it's great having it's you honor, guys man. I love yeah. it, Thanks, man. We Thank love you. having you here. So don't miss it. Conrad Cox new show Puppet Guy starts tonight in Cape Town, back, uh, Cape Town's Baxter Theatre and it runs all the way up until the 14th of April. Now mm. for tickets to these shows you can go to web tickets yeah. and then of course the Johannesburg run starts from the 25th of April to the 27th of May and then at Monte Casino in Johannesburg and tickets for these shows can be found at CompuTicket. It's Woo. definitely not one to be Hala. missed. Puppet Guy. Hello. Brilliant yeah. stuff indeed. Always glad to have Conrad Koch back in studio. Always glad to have JP Sebastian in studio with Thank us. You. Well, how are you doing, man? I'm uh, totally puppetless. I feel naked. Yeah, Sorry. no, no, no. After that, I mean, yeah, yeah, it feels like you do need something <laughs> somewhere. But listen, uh, we are talking movie Seven Days in Entebbe. That is what JP is talking about. But first, here's a look at the film. Germans hijacking a plane load of Israelis, Jews. How do you think the world's going to react? You know, the only thing that we have to face is the fact that German people cannot analyze the conflict in the Near East because we are all paralyzed by guilt. West Germany is a fascist society, Juan Pablo. Perhaps it doesn't appear so to you, but those who are in charge are the same ones who were in charge under Nazism. And their guilt has provided the funds which have allowed Israel to develop into an imperialist military base. We can't just read these books. We need to become them. Annihilation is for adolescents. There's a right of revolution against political oppression and social injustice. You are not oppressed. You have a business. There's a right of revolution against capitalism. You are a capitalist, a bourgeois. We all are. If that is what you think, then we have to act. And we have to act now. I do not know what you are scared of, Juan Pablo. I am not scared of anything. But maybe you should be. I only fear a life without meaning. Right, there we have it. Seven days in Entebbe. All right, man, give us the scoop. That looked like a very, like, like very deep piece there. Yeah, so uh, you've got uh, six days to go through before you get, really get to the action of this thing. But before all of that, <laughs> it's a hostage situation. It's a okay. true story of when a plane was hijacked from, it was Greece, Air France plane that was coming from Tel Aviv. So from Israel, hijacked by uh, uh, members of the PFLP, which is the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and the uh, Graf which is the Red Army faction, uh, a German uh, uh, leftist group back in the day, uh, also known as the Bader Meinhof gang. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, uh, it's, it's this true story of this, uh, the first, well not the first time, but um, a very visible collaboration between uh, radical revolutionary groups from different countries uh, and, and taking civilians into, uh, well basically it's a terrorist attack. And, uh, what, what you see is the, 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 the sort of the procedural thing uh, between uh, them negotiating with uh, the, what they're going to do with the hostages, these, these uh, hijackers from their perspective, and then also from the perspective of Israeli politicians, how they're possibly going to either negotiate or are they going to rescue uh, these people who are on this plane. So, Look, what I love story. about what I love about movies that's based on true stories is you you, you get that you get that sense of, of reality and do you get that with this movie? Do you feel that throughout the course of this movie? Yeah, and that really helps if you have some really good actors. Like you yeah. notice some of these uh, Rosamund Pike, who you'll remember from Gone Girl, um, and Daniel Pru, uh, who I think people will remember from Inglorious Bastards. Uh, he was the sniper. In uh, okay, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so so it's it's interesting because for the first time in in a long time, it's a movie that doesn't sort of just paint things as black and white and you've got the bad guys, ostensibly, who are these uh, other people might say freedom fighters, yes. uh, who, who are questioning their motives for being there. Am I ready to kill for a liberation movement for, you know, and actually this is pertinent today given that, you know, uh, 16 Palestinians were killed recently uh, mm. in protests. Exactly. Uh, so this is ongoing and um, it doesn't, re re it's, it's not necessarily totally a grey area either because it is quite, 
glorying in the end in the, in the rescue of the hostages, which it was, you know, very heroic. Uh, but at least it's interesting in that it adds a spin of telling it from the perspective right. of, oh, the, the bad guys and just this cliche sort yeah. of like, ah, I have a hook for a hand and I don't know, I stroke a white cat or something like that and I'm a James Bond bad guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so it's, okay. it's, it's quite complex, uh, but also pretty tense. Yeah, so you give it a thumbs up, two thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go to the popcorn just <laughs> that's, yet. That's no. pushing us. This feels like our hostage situation. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no it, it's worth it, especially if you're into okay. the history. Yeah, uh, like if you love go. the Cold War history kind of stuff, and especially what this country is through, uh, went through, because uh, I mean, this is set in 1976. Yes. And need I say more to South Africa? Um, and and at the time that this hijacking was happening, it was an international spectacle, and people really thought that you know, in some parts of the world, that the world was going to end. Uh, I think even Henry Kissinger, who's an international war criminal That's himself, uh, thought that. Yeah. Uh, uh, just before this, you know, like a uh, nuclear war was going to be the consequence in the Middle East. So awesome, man. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very much. Seven days and in Tebe, it looks amazing. So that's opening this weekend. Can't look forward. I will, will definitely looking forward to that one. But stick around to more movie news from JP a little bit later on Five Fingers from Marseille and also Hampstead. He'll give us his thoughts about those movies opening this weekend. We're going to take a quick ad break. Don't go anywhere. Bevan Samuels performing for us after the break. Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. It's been an amazing show and it's only getting better. Bevan Samuels at the mic for another performance. Not the only one.
so pleased with yourself when you finished, dude. That is so, so cool. Guys, thank you so much. That was spectacular. You can catch them at West End in Athlone on Friday and Spear Wine Estate on Saturday. That's in Stellenbosch. Go and see him perform alongside a stellar lineup. You have to see this young man perform live. He is amazing, dude. Thank you so much. Um, you can let us know what you thought of that performance. Lots of thumbs up coming on social media. Hit us up at Expresso Show is the handle to use. In your national news this morning, struggle veteran and former wife of the late President Nelson Mandela, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, has died at the age of 81. She passed away yesterday afternoon at the Nedcare Mill Park Hospital in Johannesburg after a long illness for which she had been in and out of hospital since the start of the year. Madikizela Mandela was one of the greatest icons of the struggle against apartheid. Her activism and resistance to apartheid landed her in jail on numerous occasions, eventually causing her banishment to the small town of Branford in the then Orange Free State. With Easter weekend 2018 done and dusted, South Africans will wake up to a new economic reality this week as three major consumer price increases kick in. The VAT increases moves from 14 to 15 percent on all taxable items, which means that for every 100 rand spent, 15 rand will go to the taxman. The levy on sugary beverages is now charged at 2.1 cents per gram of sugar content. And then motorists will have to fork out 72 cents more for 95 octane, 69 cents for 93 octane and 65.2 cents per litre for all grades of diesel. Now moving further abroad in response to a media question whether the growing tensions between Russia and the West could be compared to the Cold War of the previous century, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov made several accusations. He said the UK and its Western partners were playing children's games in their response to the poisoning of ex-spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter in the UK. He also said that they had disregarded all accepted behavior and resorted to open lies and disinformation. 29 nations have expelled Russian diplomats because of the poisoning. Israel has cancelled plans to deport migrants to Africa after striking a deal with the United Nations Refugee Agency. More than 16,000 asylum seekers will instead be resettled in unspecified Western countries, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office has announced. The rest, about 18,000, will be granted permanent residency in Israel. Israel's Supreme Court had blocked deportations meant to begin on Sunday. The new plan will be implemented over a five-year period. Well, that was your 8 o'clock news update. Let's get a final look at what's happening in the world of sport. Here's Graham. It's shaping up to be a pretty massive week in sport. Let's kick it off with the battle currently underway at the Wonders Australia. Closed out day four in Johannesburg on 88-4, the loss of three yesterday. Still needing 524 runs to beat South Africa in that fourth and final cricket test of their series. Earlier in the day, Captain Faf Duplessis put in a captain's innings, hitting 120 runs as he helped the protest declare on 344 to hold a massive second innings lead of 611. So that final day of play of that final test gets underway at 10 a.m. today. All of the action right here live on SABC3. Then staying with cricket, South Africa's Heinrich Klaassen has been called up to the Indian Premier League to serve as a replacement for Steve Smith. That's, of course, in the Rajasthan Royals team. 
Now, due to Smith's uh, ball tampering ban, Klaassen comes into the tournament after making his ODI and T20 debut for South Africa in February this year, of course against India. The first game of the 2018 edition of the IPL takes place this coming Saturday as the Mumbai Indians host the Chennai Super Kings. Then it doesn't get much bigger than this in the world of football. The Champions League semi-finals get underway tonight with a repeat of last year's final as Juventus go up against Real Madrid. When the sides last met, Real, they secured their 12th Champions League title, pulling off a very memorable 4-1 win in their final in uh, the Millennium Stadium. And while Los Blancos tackle Juventus in Italy, Sevilla host by Munich in tonight's other semi-final clash. Both mouth-watering fixtures kicking off at a quarter to nine South African time. Then on to rugby, Pukka and Martis will be contesting the final of this year's Varsity Cup tournament after both teams secured victories in last night's semi-finals, very high scoring matches as well. Over in Stenobosch, Martis maintained their unbeaten run in the tournament as they scored 10 tries on their way to a 65-18 win over Wits that set up a home final. In the night's other game, Pukka saw out a convincing 60-31 win of the University of Johannesburg. So well done to all of the boys involved and that's where we leave our sport for this morning. Well, well, let's just take one final reminder about the petrol price update. The Department of Energy has announced that the price of 95 unleaded and leaded petrol in Gauteng will increase by 72 cents a litre and at the coast by 62 cents with effect from midnight. Then 93 unleaded and leaded petrol will increase by 69 cents a litre in Gauteng and 59 cents a litre at the coast. Diesel prices will go up by 65 cents a litre in Gauteng and 55 cents a litre at the coast. And that's where we leave your track for this morning. Thank you so much, Zoe. Let's quickly take a look at your weather and your temperatures for last time right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's your Tuesday morning, and it looks like the northeastern region can experience a couple of thunder showers today with mild temperatures expected. Your temperatures are running through Polokwane, 14 minimum with a maximum of 26 degrees today. Mombela, 16.30. Pretoria, 15.24. Johannesburg, 14 with a maximum 23. Maikeng, 16.26. Klaxdorp, 15.24. Kimberley, 16 with a mild maximum of 24 as well. Bloemfontein 13.24, Richards Bay on 22 minimum with a maximum of 32 degrees, nice and hot today. Peter Marsburg 18.27, Durban 23 and a high of 28. Ntata 18.25, East London 19.25, Craddock 16.28, Port Elizabeth 18.23, George 17.22, Sutherland 13 with the maximum of 26 degrees, Cape Town 15.26, Worcester starting off on 14, reaching a high of 30, Springbok 16.28 and Uppington on 17, a minimum with a maximum 27 degrees later on. That's a wrap of your weather and your temperatures for your Tuesday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's time for us to catch up with social media. I miss this. We haven't done this in a little bit. We're talking about Bevan Samuels. He's on our show today, blowing us away with his incredible talent. And uh, we wanted to know from you, what did you think of his performances ahead of the Throwback to Love tour? Let's see who kicked off. Uh, Dion says, oh, okay, we're not moving. Oh, we turned the screen blue. I don't know what I did. It wasn't me. Uh, but Dion says, it was a great performance. Vuyo says, beautiful to look at, handsome, sexy. I was totally serenaded. Great voice and performance. Also, Chantal says, what a great performance. So proud of my hometown. And then Oyama says, I love the song. I even downloaded it. Fantastic. His voice was so amazing. Even the technology is losing its mind on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Lots more to come. We'll be right back after this. Happy I do it. birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Ah, yes, love that song. Always getting you in the right mood, of course. Every day, millions of people celebrate their birthdays all over the world. So as we welcome today, the 3rd of April, we took a moment to wish some of our celebs and also you at home a very happy birthday. Well, we're going to kick it off with funny man Eddie Murphy celebrating his birthday today. Born in 1961, he's most, you know, notably yes. known for his roles in Natty Professor and Beverly Hills Cop. He's also had, uh, you know, lend his voice to the animated films such as Donkey and Shrek, Mushu and Mulan, 
Khan and his former lover and baby mama Spice Girl member uh, Mel B. They've recently reconnected to hmm. build, rebuild the, the estranged father-daughter relationship since they split in 2006. Well, that's good. Happy birthday, Eddie Murphy. I mean, I loved him in Nutty Professor Man. The clumps. You can forget the clumps. And then also celebrating her birth today is British singer Leona Lewis. Of course, born in 1985, Leona's career kicked off after she won a TV talent show competition. And since then, she's been releasing a number of uh, singles, including Bleeding Love, we know very, very well, Better In Time, and Run as well. That's right. Well, listen, that was our bite-sized dose of who's celebrating their birthday. If you're celebrating your birthday, a very happy birthday to you. And if you'd love to wish someone or, you know, if it's your birthday, tweet us at Expresso Show and we could be wishing you too. Oh, I love it. Brenda and Princess trying their best to keep quiet in the background. Yeah, we love you ladies. Thank you for looking after us in our Mac Cafe. Now, of course, uh, Cape Town, I hope you know. I hope you are bracing yourselves. It is your time, your time to shine. Present to search on three proudly brought to you by Mac Cafe and Capitec Bank is here and it's in the mother city and it's happening at the DHL Rugby Stadium this coming Saturday and Sunday. That's the 7th and 8th of April. It's your opportunity to get your place in TV, either here on Express or on Top Billing or Afternoon Express. You've got to get there at 8 a.m. in the morning for registration. That's when it opens, but I suggest you get there a lot earlier. We saw so many people rock up for our first audition. Prepare your link, 15 to 30 seconds. Come ready to impress us, but most importantly, be yourself. We cannot wait to connect with you. I'm going to be one of the judges. It's going to be the most awesome day. Well, still to come on your Feel Good Breakfast show, we take a look at what is trending. And of course, Google got involved with some April Fool shenanigans. We bring you more on that. And then the gorgeous Amy Hopkins is in studio. And we're, we're talking about making a delicious orange salmon salad. Oh, it sounds absolutely delicious. You want to stay tuned for that. Make the upcoming long weekends a hashtag strong weekend by enjoying all that Protea Hotels by Marriott has to offer. Whether you're living it up, quieting down, or spending times with those that mean the most to you. If you book your accommodation a minimum of seven days in advance, you can get up to 30% off your stay. So whatever your idea of a hashtag strong weekend may be, make it count with Protea Hotels by Marriott. T's and C's apply. Visit protea.marriott.com today. It's my feel good breakfast show. There we have it. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So right here on SABC3. Zoe, it's all about tech right now. Love it. Our, our tech update of the day. And I think uh, two rather interesting stories are that this morning. That's right. Well, you know what? Just last week, we looked at a story of a Chinese satellite that has stopped working and was heading down to Earth on some point or another over the Easter weekend. Now, the satellite was called Tiangong-1 and it did hit Earth over the weekend, but thankfully nowhere near any mm. people. Now, at around 2 a.m. yesterday, morning the satellite crashed harmlessly into the Pacific Ocean and scientists around the world 
have let out a collective <laughs> yeah. sigh of relief because Tiangong One has been orbiting Earth out of control for the past two years and it is it's been very difficult to figure out when it would and where it would re-enter the atmosphere but luckily it happened just yesterday morning in the pacific ocean absolutely and it's not posing any other dangers no. right on earth nor in space as well and then how's this april fools can be you know it can be quite frustrating when you get caught off guard but this year google did something quite fun to mark the occasion and it didn't involve any practical jokes i think it's pretty awesome actually now for the first week of April, you can play Where's Wally on Google Maps. So if you go into the app on your smartphone or maybe on your web browser as well, a little Where's Wally icon will appear on the left of the screen. And then if you click on him, you'll be entered into a fun game where you'll have to find Wally and his friends in different parts of the world. So whether you want to keep the kids occupied or maybe you're just looking for a bit of uh, nostalgia, go check out this fun game on Google Maps. It will only be active this week, so you still have a couple of days to, to start playing that. I just I, logged onto my Google Maps right now and he kind of sneaks into the little I kind of feel like Google Maps is now teasing us with a game that needs to stay. They need to bring it back or figure out a way to make yeah, it stay man. longer than just a week. But that was our little daily tech update for you, of course. We'll have more tomorrow for you. Do the kitchen dance. Don't stop the kitchen dance. You've got to keep doing the kitchen dance. Amy Hopkins, <laughs> we love you. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, we're talking about heart health. We're talking about blood pressure. Well, we were talking about your pulse, but yes. obviously our system and keeping it as healthy as possible. And you always swoop in with some amazing recipes to really, um, you know, not, not only give us a double dose of deliciousness, but to well, help you. with <laughs> health. Exactly. Um, so what we make is like the real, healthiest ingredients it's I've a ever really seen. heart healthy um, dish. So obviously we were talking about, about heart health earlier, pulse, blood pressure, these are a lot of foods that help to keep your blood pressure low, keep your heart healthy. So we've got some lovely, beautiful baby spinach over here. So All your kind of fresh. Mm. yeah, lovely for a salad base instead of lettuce, full of nutrients and also full of potassium. Like bananas, also full of potassium. They really help your body to process and get rid of salt. So oh, in wow. turn, which lowers okay. your blood pressure. So always try and have more potassium in your diet if you do struggle with high blood pressure. And then we've got some lovely mm. salmon. Oily fish in general is wonderful for. Um, for kind of just heart health because those omega-3s and 6s just really help fight inflammation, they lower those triglyceride levels and just again keep your blood pressure nice and low and constant. So what we're going to do is just put our lovely salmon. Salmon at the beginning of the yeah. month, salt at the end of the month. I love it. Yeah. Mackerel. <laughs> yeah. Mackerel's good and affordable. So we're just going to put our salmon in a little foil parcel over here. And instead of using salt, we're going to be using a little bit of um, orange juice just to help oh, flavor wow. our fish. Because you do want to try and keep a low sodium diet, sure. obviously, for your heart health. And, and a, a fatty More fish like this, the darker fish, they, they do generally taste a lot saltier. They, they pack a bit more of a salty punch for me. You really don't need to I add feel. any flavor. I mean, a little bit of olive oil as well is also your good fat. And we just kind of wrap this up you would set your oven to about 200 degrees i like it so a bit hot, hot and then you'd be, put, put in a baking tray and bake for about 10 minutes or so it's a miniature so, parcelet i think yeah. you can you can probably put a few fillets in there yeah no, no, exactly like a big this parcel. is like a meal for one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've got a cooked salmon over here oh, and we're wow, just going to assemble our salad so as i said earlier we've got some beautiful baby spinach which we're going to use as our base for our salad and then we've got some lovely, crunchy, beautiful radishes. Because I think Ooh. once you're leaving uh, things like salt out and other flavors, you need to pack in that punch somehow. Yeah. With other, and radish has that lovely, beautiful... It's got like a peppery vibe. Exactly. And it's also texturally, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. And then we've got some pomegranates. Now, studies have shown that... Um, if you drink a bit of pomegranate, pomegranate juice every day or just eat pomegranate, it'll, it'll, it'll lower, your, <laughs> lower your blood pressure every day. So, um, so yes, also really good for heart health. And then we've got some orange segments, which add that beautiful acidity. I mean, it's just going to go beautifully uh, with the this fish. A, there's a lot of balance in this as well. I like the fact that it's not just down the line. There's savory, there's sweet, there's acidity, there's, yes, there's peppery. Exactly. There's, and it's colorful, it's, and I it love that. It is beautiful. That. It's very Instagram friendly yeah, as well. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you can either serve your fish directly on or with your salad, or you can flake it in. I'm actually Break just going to put yeah. it on the mm. side and just gently kind of start breaking it up a little bit like this. Um, and it's such a beautiful, easy, quick, Weeknight meal, and you can have it for lunch the next day. To, if, if you've got fish that has been pre cured, it's up to you how far you want to push that in terms of cooking it. It's nice oh, when eating in a salad when it's, it's flaky like this, you can break it up. But I, I love a, a smoked kind of you know, yes, salmon trout or something. Exactly. Trout, anyway. And mm. smoked mackerel really is a good, affordable option. Um, you, 
while living on this kind of um, heart healthy diet, you do want to avoid eating a lot of saturated fats. So kind of cut down your red meat intake, have fish as your lean fish, protein. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse and, the pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the key word here is fish to double three seven two eight. We will send you this unbelievably healthy ingredients list and you can whip up your own citrus fish salad. Yeah. Uh, Mandarin, we're going to call it. I like oh, that. Oh, that looks beautiful, yes. man. Amy Hopkins, you're a genius. <laughs> um, it looks lovely, it looks healthy, it looks vibrant. Oh, let's not forget our little bit of garnish over here on the side. It's not coriander, <laughs> Greg, it's parsley. So. That's the only thing people know about me. Um, and the there key thing again here is that key word, which is fish to double three seven eight. It looks amazing. Well, it's that time of the week again. Yes, you've guessed it. We're about to travel around the world in our regular guessing game. And if you are a travel or geography lover, then this one is definitely for you. So show us your travel smarts by guessing where in the world this week's mystery city is. And of course, you can share those guesses with us on Twitter and Facebook with the hashtag Expresso Show. That's it. Hashtag Travel Tuesday at that yes. as well. So this morning, we are looking for the name of an island off the coast of West Africa known for its year-round warm weather the natural beauty and unique landscapes. All right, so we are gonna give you a couple of clues, so listen carefully. Firstly, did you know this island is home to the Fire Mountains or Montanas del Fuego, a mountain pass with a unique landscape of lava fields, cones, and salt marshes, and this volcanic mountain was responsible for eruptions in the 1700s. Oh, I like that, Del Fuego. Del Fuego. I love it. Yeah. All right, so you can also explore the Cueva de los Verdes, a series of volcanic hollows formed by the eruption of Mount Corona. This happened around 4,000 years ago. The green caves form part of the longest lava tunnel mm. in the world. That is amazing. Sure. That is amazing. And also, did you know that the entrance to the famous lava tunnels at Mount Corona were transformed by architect and artist Cesar Manrique and now serves as a tourist attraction featuring a collection of gardens, cafes, a natural lake home to albino crabs, and an underground Cave bar. Yeah, it sounds hey. levels. And of course, you can explore the depths of the island, deep sea life, without having to dive, as the island offers underwater safaris. Mm. Mind blown. You can even explore the Atlantic Ocean in a submarine with a professional diver as your guide. I'm going to this place. Why have I not been here? I've decided I am going to this place. Why have I not been here? Now we right, just have to find to out where it is. We need to make a plan. Yeah, if you could tell us where it is, maybe we can go there. Let us know on our Facebook page, Express the Morning Show, SABC3. Share your guesses with us and we'll see if you're right. A little bit later on. I'm going. <laughs> Um, so we've got Conrad and Chester here. Chester, have you seen something you like? Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Hello. Hello. How's it? Can Where I have the donut? Yes. Oh, thank you. Look at that service mm. with a smile Delicious. in our Mac Cafe. Thanks, so we're going to continue to chat to both Chester and Conrad about the brand new show. Sounds absolutely amazing. Then, if you missed it last night, hashtag TIOT8, Tropica Island of Treasure. It's getting Ooh. heated. We're going to bring you a bit of an update. Get stuck in, Thanks. but it's all yours. I it's can't eat it though. Come on, can you I can. No, you're allowed. You're allowed. You look at it.
Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. But let's dial back the clock just a little bit. Last night on Tropica, Island of Treasure in the Maldives, things got heated. It really was an unbelievable show last night. Um, and, uh, you know, we, I know there was no elimination yesterday, but it looked like the teams were fighting for that place last night. Of course, their first step towards um, a little bit of bounty, but this coming week it's going to be about elimination again. And it always seems to come as such a shock when you've got to say goodbye to one of these teams. We've bonded with them. They are putting their best foot forward. Um, certainly the case when we talk about Team Green, um, and we've now got on the line Corabo Mohane from Team Green to chat a little bit about, I think, just the time on the island, what it's all been like. Corabo, good morning. How are you doing? How are you feeling, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, very good, man. My, my poor little heart just can't take it. About three weeks ago, things seemed to kick into a completely different gear on the island. Before we get into mm -hmm. last night's episode, just looking at your experience as a whole, is it what you expected? Did you think it would be this crazy, this much of a, a, a wild ride when it comes to your nerves, man? No, man, actually I didn't. I actually thought that it would have been a bit easier um, looking, at, uh, looking, at, looking at last season's um, episodes and stuff. I thought maybe it would be a bit easier. Um, cause I thought to myself maybe because I've seen it'll make it a bit easier. But when you get there and you actually in the action, it's actually much more difficult and it's much more hectic, you know. So, but I'm glad that I, I, I sort of prepared myself in advance. Although, even all of those preparations, Dan, you can never be 100% ready. Yeah. Well, there's so many variables, and I think Kat's done a great job as the game's master kind of leading us through that drama, but I'm sure it comes nothing close to what it's like for you guys in the middle of it. Your teams need to be on point, and Team Green seems to be coming into their own at the moment. What do you make of your team's performance last night? Jeez, last night was hectic, man. I don't know. Um, I think one thing that... Um, sort of works between uh, Lisa and I is the fact that we were able to communicate. So I think our communication skills have really become really, really good. And I think that's what works for us. And I think where maybe we come short is that um, at some point where you feel like you want to go on, but your body is just like nothing, you know, um, you can't do it anymore. And that's where maybe you sort of give up. But I think when, whenever we get an opportunity to look at each other and speak, you know, we, we really encourage each other. And whenever we are away from each other, it becomes difficult for us to, to work the way that we would like to because it works better when we're communicating. Oh, it's going to be so, good, so hard to say goodbye when this journey is done and dusted. I think you, you guys become so connected through this process. I know you can't reveal too much about the twists and turns headed, but if you could sum it up for us, what does the rest of this season have in store for us? The poor viewers have to sit on the edge of our seats. I think, um, obviously, there are four teams left, and what I can say is that it's going to be hectic. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting um, for people to watch because, you know, Qatar always has slender twists and when he comes up with those things, you know, things begin to happen. I mean, a lot of people didn't believe what happened last week, you know, where the teams were separated and we had to literally um, compete on our own, you know, uh, to make sure that we stay on the island. I mean, any team could have been formed from us being separated, but it didn't happen like that. And I'm glad that it didn't because, I mean, we, we, we also got to keep our own teammates, you know. So, But other than that, I think going forward, people need to expect fireworks. It's going to be crazy. Um, and, yeah, I mean, whoever it is that, that, you, that they're rooting for, you should continue supporting because they never know. That team could be the one that can take it in the very end. Yeah, and I think what the season has proven us so, so far, there are no favourites, there are no shoe ins to take any one particular challenge all the long haul. So, buddy, thank you so much for connecting with us this morning. Stay safe out there um, and you know, enjoy the final stage of the process. It seems to be getting closer and closer to that business end. So if you missed last night's grueling episode, be sure to watch the repeat this coming Saturday at 3 p.m. right here on 3. Or you can just simply head over to Tropico's YouTube page where you will find the full episode. And don't forget, you also stand a chance of winning some incredible prizes when you buy Tropico. 
Africa. Just follow the entry details on the bottle. You could stand a chance of winning loot.co.za vouchers to shop online. American Tourist Luggage, Daniel Klein Watches, Airtime, or that grand prize, of course, of a Kia Picanto. But all the terms and conditions can be found at tropica.co.za. Right, so um, Leanne, the yes, year sir. is still very, very young. Yes. And um, if you're looking for a romantic uh, place to propose, maybe, or be proposed at, you know, then we've got you covered because we have our five top, brilliant, most beautiful yes. pro proposals there, destinations in the entire world. We'll run you through right now. I'm here. I'm yeah? available. Listen All right. closely. Let's go to New York City. All right. Now, <laughs> New York City has been made famous in films. And, of course, it's a very romantic destination thanks to films like An Affair to Remember, Sleepless in Seattle, oh, that. for that iconic Empire State building scenes. Uh, but if you're not looking for an overcrowded touristy spot, then go and check out Bow Bridge in the middle of Central Park. It's the perfect proposal spot it overlooks the lake the scenic time mm. uh, it's scenic any time of the year and it's definitely a great place to pop yeah, that question man, just... in new york look, look at those pictures man summer it looks beautiful winter it looks magical and when you're done with the proposal you can say start spreading the news yes, yes. you're in it eh? you're I'm just there. in it eh? you've, this. you've you envisioned this i like it then heading over to london now london is home to the tallest building in the uk the shard stands at 95 stories high and is uh, it's host to, to a number of fine dining restaurants and on the 72nd floor, it serves as a viewing deck where you can enjoy the London skyline wow. and it's truly a beautiful, romantic spot. Just Don't looking in. over, hey? I Something love it. different. I, like I love this. it. Let's go over to Ireland now, shall we? Where the eight kilometer coastline known as the cliffs of, I think it's pronounced Mower in Ireland, is one of the world's most beautiful views. Now, the picturesque seaside cliff is best viewed in the early hours of mm. the morning when there are fewer people and you are free to ask. The big question. So get out there at 3 a.m. and ask that question. Wow, baby. good luck getting a partner up at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but why? It's too early. <laughs> Listen, I'm heading over to Bavaria right now. The new Schwanstein Castle, probably one of the most fairy tale like places in the world, looking as, as though it's been lifted straight from the pictures of a Disney classic. Now, this castle is surrounded by dense forest with excellent hiking trails, and the view from the castle from the Stunning. forest is, is a perfect backdrop oh. for any perfect proposal. I know. Getting there. You know, <laughs> it's a bit of a hike, maybe. It's a bit of a hike, but it's, but it's stunning. It's, oh, it's romantic. I love wow. that. And then this is our final one, but probably one of my most famous ones because I've actually been there. Our final pick for the most yes, romantic proposal yes. destination is right here in our very own South Africa. We're talking about God's Window, so-called for the panoramic view of the low felt. It's just one of South Africa's most natural wonders with canyons, rock formations, waterfalls. God's Window is a breathtaking wonder, perfect for an unforgettable <sighs> proposal. It's something. Yeah, and great it's ideas. something to behold. Great ideas. Your top pick there? God's, God's window. window. Yeah, figured yeah. so much. Definitely. <laughs> but listen, let us know. Well, Maybe... I'll take all of them and you can just propose in every city. In every I'm single one. Oh, wow, dude. More <laughs> life. Typical Leanne. <laughs> Listen, let us know. Um, do you have a, a top romantic spot maybe where you would like to get engaged or maybe where you did actually get engaged yes. as well? Let us know. Express the Morning Show, SABC3 on Facebook. So a little bit earlier, we had some fun and, of course, the expected mayhem with our ventriloquist performer and comedian Conrad Koch and, of course, the real superstar Chester ahead of his new show, Puppet Guy, which starts tonight at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town. Right now, we're going to play our favourite game. I know I say that about every game, but I really do love this game. Never have I ever, and here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask the two of them a set of questions that will reveal some very honest truths. Now, if he has done the activity, if either of them have done that in question, then they have to tell the story behind it. Guys, are you ready? I'm ready. Are, are you ready? And feel I'm free ready. to reveal about each other. If yeah. the one's not being honest. Oh, you're going down, dude. Do you expect oh, it to be honest, Chester? Down. I don't know. I'll be honest. I'll be honest for you. Let's I don't go. know who to trust anymore. I just don't know who I know. to trust. We're okay. the same person. We are the same person. <laughs> so, gents, I'm going to fire off the first question. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? All right. I'm ready. Never have I ever used the line, do you know who I am? All the time. All the time. He uses it. <laughs> do you know who I am? Chester missing. God. <laughs> Because people don't often know that they don't know. Oh, no, uh, they the, don't know. No, the they don't know. They don't know. It's like he's. It's like it's like he's McDonald's and I'm Ranatos. Because <laughs> you guys look so similar, though. It is. It's difficult it, it, to is that. it is. It is. Our second question: Ever have I ever turned down a spot on a comedy show or to a lineup because of the potential work um, with someone I don't get along with? 
Oh, yes. <laughs> I once turned on an entire road show because he was on it. Oh. What don't you like about me? Do you know where your hand is? <laughs> oh. 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 Dude. But that's fair, though. <laughs> yeah. What he's saying, it's fair <laughs> well, game. It I, don't know. Dude, I, I, I can understand. Now you're joining him and nailing me. <laughs> I don't care. You know what's going on, yeah? <sighs> We're going to ask you to start test the It's coming. Never have I ever thought of calling in sick to work because of a big night or otherwise. Have you ever done that? I can't, I don't get hung over because I'm made out of latex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and have you ever uh, done Yeah, that? no, I've never called in sick, but it's been pretty hairy. I mean, I, like you arrive and you're feeling, and I've got to think for two people. Has what? he ever just gone on and done the show without you, if you're feeling I had, I had the obviously this guy in my entire TV career. <laughs> 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 ENCA and all that. <laughs> Question four, moving along swiftly. Uh, never have I ever pretended not to hear a fan when they called my name in public. No, no, I, I'm normally very f nice to be because he's got no fans. Oh, I have the fan, exactly, nailed. Yo, great has minds, eh? Maybe Stick I'm your hand inside. Never, ha has anyone ever called your name in public? Uh, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was rough. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Sizzled. It was Dude, a burn, sizzled. Eh? That was a burn, Chester. But you know what they do? You know what they do? They call me Chester. So then they're like, Gwede Matashi, hey, it's Chester. <laughs> uh, that's not how Gwede do it. Hey, it's Chester. <laughs> So you get, you've got a yes, I know. Uh, there, I know. Peter Stein, amazing man. Uh, uh, um, then question five, uh, our final question. I can be the next Expresso host. Uh, uh, well, actually, before before that, I need to ask you a qualifying question. Mm. Never have I ever performed while under the influence of what? Of someone else. Someone else's. His hand is in my. You know what? <laughs> I'm always under the influence. You know what that's like. You've got Leanne and... Oh, <laughs> people, are, oh, people say dude, you've changed, man. Oh. People say you've changed. See, that's the last time we're going to let you I sit with the two ladies, I man. I had changed. I was once wearing <laughs> shorts and now I've got I these I love stuffies. your shoes as well, man. Do you like Just, I love your, your shiny new shoes. Do you shoes. like my shoes, guys? Guys, I love you, man. I love both of you. I love you. Can't I, stick I, I love one inside. of you a little bit more than the other, but oh, I'm not going to say who. Okay? <laughs> that's um, but what well, I that's am going to say is don't miss it. Conrad Cox's new puppet show, The Puppet Guy, starts tonight in Cape Town's Baxter Theatre, running up until the 14th of April. Woo. Tickets for these shows can be found at Web Tickets. The Joburg run then kicks off on the 25th of April up until the 27th of May, and that's at Monte Cassino in Johannesburg. Tickets for these shows can be found at computicket.com. I'm going to tell you one thing. He's giving away water in Cape Town. I am. Go. I'm going to give away grey water. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh rough, burnt. Rough. Wow. I'm good. Thanks. I've got a lot wow. of that from my Thanks, washing Chester. machine this weekend. <laughs> well, still to come on your Feel Good Breakfast show, JP Sebastian is still here. Can you believe it? And he's going to be reviewing the movie Hampstead. Yep, Hampstead indeed. Listen, and then into the kitchen right now. I'm sweating Easy. some onions already. It's going to be amazing. Creamy chicken and sweet potato soup. You sweaty don't want to onions. That. I'm sweating onions. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's amazing. Step into the spotlight as South Africa's next TV superstar with Presenter Search on 3, proudly brought to you by Capitec and Mac Cafe. Own the SABC3 stage as the newest host of Top Billing Afternoon Express or the Expresso Morning Show. Gates open at 8 a.m. for the Cape Town leg of the auditions on the 7th and 8th of April at the DHL Newlands Rugby Stadium. Visit presentersearch on 3.com for more details. With SABC3, the stage is yours.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. Time for us to catch up with our movie guru, our movie corp, JP Sebastian is in the house. JP, how's it going, darling? Love that title, don't I, movie corp? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm fine now, no doubt. We are proudly South Aren't African, we? and we're chatting about the movie Hampstead. Before we get into it, let's get a little sneak peek as to what it's all about. You know what? I really have to get to the charity shop quite soon. No, yeah, I've got to run too. Thank you. Um, I had hoped we could continue our talk about money. Oh, 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 didn't I tell you? Actually, no, I'm getting advice from Fiona's accountant, so. Oh, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. Mm. I hope he's not asking for too much. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I don't know, Mum. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not telling me everything. What could I possibly be hiding? <laughs> Oh, uh, hello there. Um, sorry, I didn't hear you come in. Mud in my ears. <laughs> Actually, this is um, this is my son Philip, and Philip? this is my um, handy man. Yeah, he's very handy. Okay, and that's my cue. Um, it's very nice to meet you. Sorry, Donald. 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 Uh, Mum, I'll yeah. I'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Oh, okay, well, the very first thing that JP said when the clip came on, druig. I don't know what it meant. Do you want to tell us why you called this movie I mean, let's, druig? Why let's the, chat Hampstead. Why, why, why the gentleman was exfoliating, no doubt, druig. Um, Brendan Gleeson, yeah. who I must tell you, I was pretty shocked to see play a role like this because I'm only used to seeing him in things like Troy. Intense stuff. And like intense, epic dramas where he's wearing costume and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, no, he's, he's a dynamic dude. Uh, and in this as well, uh, he plays this uh, guy who's squatting on, on uh, public land. Uh, behind where Diane Keaton is staying. And, uh, you know, even though he's this loner and whatnot, uh, even though he's, he's removed himself from society, he grows his own food and tries to stay away from everyone on Hampstead Heath, uh, that he doesn't, because he's such a good actor, the character doesn't come across as this heavy, cliched, grumpy old yeah, man, this yeah. cliched, caricatured uh, dude. You, you can hear, and, and everything is saying there's like a history and there's layers, there's reasons for why this guy finds himself in the position he does. Yeah. So, hey, uh, a really thoughtful actor, I like him too. Okay, but now, why did you call it Druach? Um, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> put me on the spot here like if you <laughs> have like I don't know heart medicine that means you can only watch certain movies then if you're the kind of person who goes oh oh that's lovely which which is you know there's there's no shame in doing then then maybe this is for you but uh uh it's <laughs> Diane Keaton plays this lady who's uh and and, and you you're gonna put me on the spot what's the sound you made for Diane Keaton you went eh. lies <laughs> I did not I, I commented that Diane has the best legs in the business. Mm, mm, Even mm. at her age, she's got the most beautiful legs that you've ever seen, which okay, I don't okay, think okay. will make an appearance I, in this you've movie. Been very but categorical and very loyally about this. But uh, so then I'll just talk more about the story. So she's this lady who's uh, she's getting over the fact that her husband has passed away, uh, but she's not really actually broaching these feelings. She's not dealing with it. She's sort of stuck in a place. Uh, she she re refuses to move on and move forward. And I don't mean that in the gross cliche sense of, oh, you got to find someone else. Her friends are all saying that, but uh, she almost finds meaning in her life trying to help this dude who's squatting yes. on the land because he's been threatened with being kicked off yeah. by big, shiny corporate developers. And yeah. she takes up his cause to try and defend his, his right to stay there. You know what? I think I'd watch it. It says it's funny, it's uplifting, it's full of heart. Sometimes you need that. And I know when uh, JP in, Sebastian in words, is says, trying my to, mom. to find a good way to explain her a movie that he thinks great. sucks, he's like, oh, <laughs> and, ugh, and, ugh. I'm like, oh, like, you're trying too hard. For but tell us how many popcorn you give this movie. If you want something that's totally like pedestrian to watch and something that will make you wistfully sigh and like afterwards I want to, someone to just put a golf club in my teeth or just give me an adrenaline shot or something. It's a bit boring. Uh, but uh, if you do like something that's like quite a sweet romance and especially with these hourly couple kind of things then maybe go watch Leisure Seeker first. Uh, Druch is the word I'm afraid. Five out of ten. Wow. Whoa. I am a little traumatized because it's a bit pedestrian, but uh, let's see if Five Fingers for Marseille does a little bit later. later we will find out from JP Sebastian. Druig? Wow. One's Five Fingers? Four. Clover No Lack. Lactose-free milk that lets you enjoy dairy again. Made with love by Clover.
Oh man, I think we all a biki drug. Okay. Well, this is not going to be. Drug. <laughs> this is not going to be a biki drug. This is going to be absolutely delicious. We all love a good bowl of creamy hot soup, especially as the colder winter weather starts to kick in. But did you know to avoid the bloating and that heaviness that often comes with eating your typical dairy found in certain recipes like a hearty soup, you can easily replace this for lactose-free alternatives like the amazing tasting Clover No Lack Milk. So, whether you are lactose intolerant or just looking to try something new that's delicious, this creamy chicken and sweet potato mm -hmm. soup. Doesn't that sound good? It's going to help start implementing a healthy alternative while, of course, keeping all the, the lactose out and the deliciousness and health in. Dude, this looks awesome. It Bro. looks hearty. It looks like we're bringing on winter Look, right now by cooking this soup. And you can't go wrong soup. with a chicken, sweet potato, creamy soup, mm. right? So what I've been doing here for the past little while now, <laughs> past I've been days. sweating onions. Leanne didn't know what sweating onions mean, so pulled up a nose for it. But it's actually delicious, all right? You sweat some onions, you get it nicely, beautiful. So now for the flavoring part, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I've got our spices, I've got some Jeez, cumin. And you're not holding back there, huh? Dude, you got it, you got it. It's going to make a lot of food. I'm catching yeah. for everyone here. So a nice clove of garlic, some masala, some cumin, and some... Um, paprika, so you can go with the smoked variety if you want Did as you well. got me onto the smoked paprika after yeah, yesterday, nice. man. It is absolutely amazing. I'm just going to heat those spices through a little bit. All right. And whilst we have that and going it, it there. It does help to release the flavors. Get the yeah. spices in as early as possible. Right. Some right. chopped coriander because That's you it. love That's these it. so much. <laughs> Look, you can go with parsley as well. Parsley will also now, work I, very, I actually, very well. To be quite honest, I don't mind cooking coriander into things. Then it balances out the flavor profile. <laughs> yeah. It's when you have it like slapped in a salad and that sort of thing. Come on. All right. It's just ridiculous. Sweet potatoes go in there. All right. All right, so once those spices unlock their flavor nicely, we've got some stock. So you can go with chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever you want to go. And we're just going to deglaze a little bit. This is now All the right. moisture of your soup starting That's to come it. together. That's yeah. it. So beautiful stock goes in there. All right, and now you cook that. And then it break down. It's nice mm. and soft. So okay, yeah, about 15, 20 minutes for that. Yeah. You're using smaller That's chunks it. of sweet potato there, which is going to... And look at that. Quicker. Beautiful. So now you cook it down up until the sweet potatoes are soft. And this is what we have Ooh, over yummy. here. You can see it. Well, you looks can probably just eat that. You can eat it. Look, you can eat it just like <laughs> that. It looks amazing. <laughs> so now for the creaming part. Okay, so All we right. have our little stick blend over here. It's not normal. Normally, I'm so used to having to talk over the sound of the blender, but that, this, this is actually all right. Um, yeah, dude. So you want to make sure that you blend everything nice. And I see you've got your potato lovely and soft. And, and by cooking there it, we go. softening it up first with all of those spices, the potato is going to absorb so many of the, the, the deep flavor notes of this lovely That's it. kind of selection of spices that you've thrown in here. Sweet potato is lovely and sweet, but it's not the most powerful flavor. Um, so you want to juice it up there. Um, and of course, the key word here, if you'd like this ingredients list, is clover to double three seven two eight. I'm dying to get onto right, the, the no lack just, addition. Just quickly, yeah. we're going to put in a cup of no lac, all right? <clears throat> so like you mentioned, it is it is great source of calcium, easy to digest, got a source of vitamin D as well. So and there's often things that you miss out. When you go lactose-free, you, you can kind of go light on certain of those nutrients. Yeah. So this really is and look, man, this is gonna, a punch. This is going to add some serious creaminess to it, all right? You know what I found? It, it's actually a slightly sweeter alternative to milk. So if you're looking to try something slightly different, it's not just for people who are lactose intolerant or looking for a lactose-free diet. If you're just wanting to try something slightly different and delicious. That's it. Chicken cubes go in, all right? Oh yeah. And you pop that onto the oven, onto the stove stump, up until it's done. And we have a beautiful, beautiful soup. All right. Well, the keyword is uh, clover. Let's that guy up there so we can have a look inside. That's it. Which one? This one here. Oh, here we go. There, there we go. go. Bam. Look wow. at that. Look, we're going to dish this out in just a second. All right, it looks Thank amazing. You. And we're going <laughs> to test it out. I know you're hungry, Graham. The keyword is clover. It's that to 3378. That's clover to 33728. But if you've missed any of those very easy steps, here they are again. Everyone loves a good bowl of hot soup. If you're lactose-free or just looking for something new, try our clover no lac creamy chicken and sweet potato soup. You will need one cup of clover no lac milk, two tablespoons of olive oil, fresh coriander, one tablespoon of roasted masala, two teaspoons of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, garlic, 250 grams of chicken breast fillets, onion, 500 grams of sweet potatoes, and four cups of chicken stock. Heat olive oil in a pot. Add chopped onion and saute until golden. Add chicken stock and bring to the boil. Then add your chopped sweet potato, chopped garlic, smoked paprika, roasted masala, 
ground cumin and fresh coriander. Simmer for 10 to 15 minutes and blend until smooth. Next, add chicken breasts and your clover no-lac milk. Cook for four to five minutes. Serve topped with crispy onions. A few easy swaps make the clover no-lac creamy chicken and sweet potato soup as good as the real deal. Made with love by Clover. All oh, right. Look at that. Made with there love we go, by brother Clover man. and Ewan this morning. Oh, and it smells amazing. All that spice is what in I, there as well. What I love is the creamy texture. You haven't sacrificed anything with the lactose, obviously, option of nothing, the no-lac milk. Let's do one more scoop. You're hungry, right? Yeah, no, I'm full <laughs> on. Man. I love this, man. It's hearty. It's delicious. It's healthy. All right. So I suppose you could pop some, some salt and pepper if you were so inclined. But being a, a slightly more hot, healthy day, um, we're going to... Do away with the salt and just bang in a handful of croutons. Come on, come on. Now you've got to have the crunch to go with this. I'm sorry. That man. looks amazing. Can I have a taste? Yeah, go for it. It looks absolutely beautiful. The key word again is clover. To double three seven two eight. Do the spices. You see now. That is magic. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> magic. Key word mm. clover. Mm. Clover no lack. Lactose free milk that lets you enjoy dairy again. Made with love by Clover. Oh, please, sir, can I have some more? Look delicious. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, no, I mean, no, it, it, it did. I'm sorry, I was just not present. <laughs> Hello, he's, everyone, he's I'm on TV. still thinking about Hampstead. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for us to take a look at our next movie. This is one that I'm really excited about. It is a South African movie, and it's called Five Fingers for Marseille. J.P. Sebastian, mm -hmm. this one excites me. And I wonder if it could possibly be one of the biggest movies to come from South Africa in a while. Man, uh, I, I hope so. Uh, let me just straight, say that straight out. Uh, yes. Because it was really enjoyable and, and oh, wow. extremely like uh, novel. Yes. Uh, the idea, of course, as you know by now, is it's a Western, mm -hmm. uh, but set in sort of the Eastern Cape, straddling Lesotho and it's whatnot. It's an Eastern, but it's a Western. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Good job, yes. You get paid and pay taxes, saying stuff like that. <laughs> I'm joking with you. Um, so, uh, yes, unfortunately, I didn't wrangle a clip in time because these these cowboys, these hooligans, kept it from me. But uh, maybe I'll show you a bit more of it on Thursday. Awesome. Uh, but the story is, is that it starts off with, as you can see, these five kids uh, who are in sort of a gang. And it is very... It's explicitly set in apartheid South Africa. It's, okay. not, it's not just totally sort of like, oh, is it a parallel world? Is it a yeah. fantasy? Are we just talking in metaphor and whatnot? Uh, so... While they're a little gang in this tiny town called Railway, which is the yeah. township outside of Marseille, yeah. uh, they, they also consider themselves sort of fledgling freedom fighters. Okay. And, and they're called the Five Fingers. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's what they call themselves, yes. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the lead uh, gentleman, uh, Vuida Bula, uh, he uh, has a run-in with the cops yeah. uh, at this young age. And uh, takes, he decides, well, he's going to make a run for it. And in a way, a lot of then his gang feel betrayed that they've left He's left them to clean up the mess of clearly what's going to happen if you killed an apartheid cop. I think I just gave away that he kills a cop, but that happens really early on. Yeah. Um, and, and he takes to a life of crime elsewhere. He just takes to thugging. But then this town has to deal with the fallout of being the town where this happened. Oh, wow. uh, so cut, flash forward to the future where, um, you know, apartheid is over. There's been this handover, but there's still these open, searing wounds. Oh, wow. Unsettled scores. So yeah. all that classic stuff of, like, well, that makes a good Western... Uh, new guy rolls into town, obviously this guy that I just mentioned who kills the cop, comes back, decides he's going to try and make a new life. No way. People, people want to have words with him and, sure. and uh, gunfights and whatnot. It sounds so. quite amazing. I'm very excited to see it. Uh, they've been it's filming beautiful. it for a while now. Of course, Vuyo has been training like crazy. I watch his Instagram all the time. Do we get a snippet of that in the movie? Um, the, the... Yes, I suppose. And if you like dudes with with tattoos and whatnot, then, then, then that's your kind I of suppose. Yes or no? Why is this a, an issue? What, do you want me to give popcorns to his abs? Eight. Why not? Okay. Oh, no, no. no. I, we all I, know I, what you I do when really... guys have abs in movies. We get a four out of ten. So let's just keep it to the acting, shall we? Just say it. You're still um, bitter. Well, I'm going to enjoy this. I really hope that it goes, you know, and, and represents us well on the international film circuit as well. Uh, and it has. I mean, it's gone to the Toronto International Film Festival there. Stunning. It's been called by, I think it was Variety Magazine. Uh, the film reviewer there said it's the best Western of last <gasps> year. Yay! And you must remember that last Last year we had, I can't remember the name of the, the Western, but I mean, that's, that's how insignificant the others are, but yeah. an American Western starring Christian Bale. So that's okay. big competition, wow. if you like. Fantastic. But as a genre, the student variety said, best of last year, a Wonderful. South African movie, which is, like I said, totally novel, totally clever. Uh, and, and, and what it does is, um, 
Yeah, anyway, you know what? You, you're just going to have to see it for yourself. Can we I'm do popcorns? Can we do popcorns? Talk more about it on Thursday. Eight out of ten. Eight out of wow. ten popcorns. I will take it. And Vuyo Dabula shows abs also. Wonderful. Thank you so much, JP Sebastian. You've been Five amazing. Five abs. Get out of here. <laughs> Five. <laughs> yes. How is it possible? Abs. That's gross. <laughs> Calling everyone and anyone who has ever dreamed of becoming a television superstar. Presenter Search on 3 is looking for the newest and hottest television talent in South Africa to become the brightest stars on SABC3. You'll need to impress our expert panel of judges to make sure that the spotlight finds you. This year's judges are... South Africa's sweetheart and TV presenting legend, Jeannie D. One of the country's most preeminent TV producers with a knack for finding top talent, Patience Stevens. Spusiso Kumalo, head of brand marketing at Capitec, knows how a presenting career can help you live better. Last but definitely not least, the radio maverick with a golden voice, the big dog himself, DJ Fresh. I want the kind of people to audition who are savvy, who are thinkers, who are ambitious, who really want to focus on this as a career, not just as an easy road to being famous. You really need something special. I'm looking for a little bit of magic. To be a presenter is more than just how you carry yourself on TV. It's everything else, how you manage your finances, how you grow your social media following, how you carry your brand on and off the screen. It's asking a lot more of the people that are coming to enter this competition. As a judge, what I'm looking for in a top TV presenter is someone with charm, charisma, someone who commands people's attention so that when they walk into the room, they have an immediate presence and everybody knows this is the presenter of the show and they're drawn to them and attracted to them. Why would you want this gig? I think, why not? Why would you not want to uh, be in front of the camera? Why would you not want to be on this stage at SABC3 in the first place? If TV is what you love, then uh, this is the perfect place to start. It might be a bit of a deep end for some, but you know that's sometimes the best time to learn how to swim. Join us, the stage is yours. Presenter Search on 3, proudly brought to you by Capitec and Mac Cafe. It's my feel good breakfast show.
Go, go in the end. Say oh, something. Oh, oh, it's a song. Back. Say something in the end. Oh, welcome back now. to your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on SABC3. <laughs> Before we end, I just wanted to say a very happy birthday. We got this message from Homozo Molwantwa who says, it's my granddaughter's birthday today uh -huh. and she is turning a whole one oh. years old. Oh, here she is, goodness. Warona Sama Ngwedi. So we want to say a big uh -huh. birthday to this big girl. She's getting big, you guys. Happy Brona birthday. Oh, happy, birthday. Gorgeous, happy birthday. Man. Happy birthday, Warona. Happy birthday. Wow, man. almost one year. Your boy is almost one, man. Almost one. Ooh, Nick, this so month, fun. this yeah. month, can you believe it, man? It goes so Shocking quickly. But we shot. love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been the most amazing show, and it's going to continue tomorrow. We'll see you same time, same Bye. place. Stay Bye. safe. Bye. Adios, muchachos. Expresso Morning Show, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.